little bit of background noise never hurt anyone. This is not true, but it's what we've got. Hi, and welcome back to the Fray 2. I mean, <clears throat> Overheard in Unisa, a Unisa podcast. I'm John. I'm here with Cam. Hi, I'm my, Cam. My, my good buddy and our guest for this week, Winslade. Returning. Uh, yeah, Returning only guest. because it's the holidays. Yeah. yeah. Holiday uh, Winslade once more. It's not the holidays for us, and that's for Cam and I, though. So... It's Easter. Probably. It is. It's yeah. The fact that it's a holiday is the reason we can be here, really. Oh, it is a holiday in Easter. I just forget things are holidays because... Um, I just can't, I just, time I don't really, broken. time is, I don't care about holidays. Things go on break and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to study anyway. Yeah. Like, it's like I've, I've not accounted for this in like my schedule. Easter means that a number of my games won't fire because some people will have Easter things on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and it means that I get a goddamn couple days off work, which is always nice. It, Easter for me, literally it, all it means is. I got paid more on Friday. Fuck yeah. That's no, something. that's what it's about. I used to ask to work Easter because yeah. it was time and a half and dead. So Why is Easter so long? Like, Easter, you think of Easter and like, oh yes, the day Easter, but actually it's four days. It's probably to do with the fact that it that Easter, the event that it's referencing, is more than one day. There's a number of things. Do you want to get into the theology of it? The, I just, think it's because they can't remember where they put all the eggs. Exactly. That's... <laughs> I, I saw I saw I think that's a great reason yeah. for it to, for it to be longer. Like you just got to have the day. They started with one day to find the, all the eggs, and then they just got more and more extravagant, hiding more eggs Egg every time, and like over a bigger thing, more people got involved, and eventually, like the Easter egg hunt went for four days. Yeah, I saw Thursday be referred to as Bad Thursday the other day. Bad Thursday. <laughs> yeah, because it comes before Good Friday. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm about it. Isn't, uh, it. isn't it Black Friday though? Good Friday is a, a different one. There's different. No, Fridays. Good Friday was last. It was Friday. It was Ash yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, it was Good Friday because on account of that, like major person dying in the, re in the theology. Yeah. In the theology. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, listeners at home or on the bus, you thought we were dead. I thought we were dead. We I wished were we were dead. Aww. You thought we were dead, but I'm proving you wrong yeah, right we're, now. We're back. And by that, I mean I messaged Cam yesterday and be like, do you want to, do you have a time we can record a podcast? He's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, what about tomorrow? And he's like, yeah, cool. No, uh, it, was, it, then, was, it was Friday because I got really confused because of the long weekend. No, it was Friday. Yes. Yeah. Relatable content when it's a long weekend and you keep thinking it's the day after it is for the whole fucking thing. I, a long weekend still don't exist to me. As I said, holidays don't exist to me. No, that's fair. Yeah. Holidays are like all my classes get pushed, could push back like a day and I'm like, Okay. By that logic, Prosh is a holiday. It is. Yeah. Uh, my classes don't get affected by Prosh now because oh, I'm in you, honors. You I didn't get to go to Prosh soul. because I had a 10 a.m. lab and it's like honors. So uh, we cope, seethe, and mold. God. I, my house recently, like, Jack looked it up and was like, mold is just, it means mad and bald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not, that's just, it's just mad and bald. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, right? That's a great word. We've yeah. started using it a lot more now. <laughs> like, we'd use it, like, so ironically before, but now we're like, oh, no, absolutely. It's, it's fucking... <laughs> you're going so mad, your hair's falling out. You're molding. Yeah. Fucking um, King Neptune over here. Did y'all read the latest prosh? No. I tried to. You tried to? Did you have any favorite bits? Oh no, it all kind of blurred together with every other prosh. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I I quite enjoyed it. There's one on the table I over need, there. I need to message the official like prosh, like Twitter or whatever the fuck they've got. I don't want to get a Twitter for this, but like, I'll take the that only hit reasons for you. I need to get Twitter is always for the bit, like trying to get Auntie Donna and the Veronicas to make unchuffed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I want I want to get like the the like dot png file of the the elbow pinup. Oh, right, yeah. Because yeah, that, that's something that shouldn't be lost to time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah all right. Uh, I'm not going to... I've got the prosh here from the table, and I'm not going to say many bits, except for my favorite one, which is on the, very, on the cover in the top right, and it merely states, an economic argument for increasing the hex debt of golden triangle-ass MFers and leaving me the fuck alone. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it was totally pretty short fair. and sweet. Now, um, we've covered... 
you know, the, we covered everything. We can go home. We yeah. covered everything. No, we've everything covered, we haven't missed. covered everything. I think there's a real elephant in the room that we need to. Ouch! I'm right here. We need. <laughs> there's it. A... What's the bit? Go on. There's something in the uh, as as a sci-fi and fantasy vaguely affiliated podcast, and as a per- as me as John, you John, yeah, as me myself as a person, I feel like we need to cover, and it is that three new Star Wars films have been announced. They have, yeah. It says so much. That this is the first time hearing of it. Yeah. Okay. So no, I get primary, your live reactions. My we, primary reaction is just like a tired sigh. Are you sure we're not talking about like? Three new Disney Plus spin-offs about like characters yeah. from Rebels. Are they mainline or are they like spin-off movies? Um, or okay, the- so I'll re- I'll read you the article from StarWars.com. Uh, this d- does lead well into the Picard bit. So yeah. um, the 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 president announced, yeah, d- uh, helming. The- <laughs> Sorry, Lucasfilm president. No, I guess Kathleen president. Kennedy. <laughs> Not no, Joseph Unista Biden. President. Yeah. No, you president. president. Yeah, it was Unista President uh, Lexi has announced three new Star Wars films. Um, I've heard the vote of no confidence is already underway. Yep. Um, uh, no, there's three new films helming the movies are James Mangold, Dave Filoni, and Charmin Obaid Shinoy. I did hear that Dave Filoni is getting a Star Wars film. That lines up. What the fuck else would they? Who who else would they give it to at this point? Yeah. Uh, James Mangold's film will go back to the dawn of the Jedi. Okay. Dave Filoni's film will focus on the New Republic, close out the interconnected stories told in The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and other Disney Plus series. Yeah. Charmin yeah. Obeyed Shinoi's film will be set after the events of Star Wars Rise of Skywalker and feature Daisy Ridley back as Rey as she builds a new Jedi Order. Okay, All but... Right. So... I, I, think that, I forget. I forget. This might not be as impactful because you still haven't watched Rise of Skywalker, and I don't intend to. I don't think it would be fun for me to do that. I'll do you a suffering trade. I'll I'll watch Neo Yokio if you watch uh, Rise of Skywalker. Okay, that actually does make it more tempting to me. Um, note that I will make this follow through. I've made a suffering trade successfully once before, and Jack has now read all of Homestuck. I thought he did that in secret to spite he you. He did, but it was uh, he had to though because I did read the Silmarillion and I did like make some Silmarillion jokes with him, and that was the like the bar for. Oh, that, it. that was apparently the, the it's set fifteen yeah. years of the events of Rise of Skywalker. Also, I oh, think no, suffering trades. Wow, are cool. just just long enough that they don't have to fucking write any of the mid ground again, and uh, then they can fill it in later, like no, everything in they Star won't. Wars. <laughs> no, this is this is good, right? That's fifteen years to get character development for um for Ray that we will never ever see. Yeah, yeah. So no, we will see. I feel like Star Wars is is just like jumps that are never explained until they are. Like it's it's Star Wars is mm. movies and then they release TV shows filling in all the gaps. Look, all right. Somehow Palpatine has returned again. Oh god. Um. No. Look. I. I yeah. Well, in that case, it wasn't think, a TV show. It was a Fortnite event. But yeah. You know. Um. But no, I do know what you mean. Like I. Okay. To me, right. I'm. I'm very jaded about content at the moment. Um, my housemates have brought this up, like when when they were watching, like, um, God damn it, uh, River Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Rivervale. Okay. Sorry, um, I was just picking every, stuff that I know you guys watch. Every time something was written well, I'd be so shocked. I'd be like, "Oh wow, they actually fucking like did a setup and payoff," and I'd be like surprised by that. And they were like, "Yeah, this isn't bad," and I'm like, "It's been so long." To be fair, your household does sort of skirt that line of mediocre content. It's true, my household does enjoy bad content on purpose a lot, but I'm talking, like, the things that we watch that are good. Like, so, so I'm not sure if last time I was on this podcast uh, was, I think, it was either just before or just after I finished watching uh, Deep Space Nine, which is definitely, like, in my, like, favorite things of all time now. Um, hmm. Deep Space Nine, real good, like, hard rate that. Um, and so I've been able to really go through with Jack the, the modern Star Trek stuff and just suffer about it. Oh. So seasons one and two of Picard, we we watched. I didn't catch all of. What either is of them. Picard? So Picard like, is. I know that Picard's. A we dude hold on. From I, the Star I, I do Trek. want to talk about Picard properly, but we have not. Have we got more information on the Star Wars film before we abandon that topic um, entirely? There wasn't. Yeah, true. What's there the, wasn't two. So it's oh, we got the, the set idea of what they are. years after yeah. Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. So we have old. Um, so we have old. We have like pre. Birth Republic, of the Jedi Order. Birth of the Jedi Order. We have. Let's finish talking about all of the Rebels uh, characters. Yeah, we've got Kennedy. Said the second of the three coming films would delve into the past to tell the story of the first Jedi to wield the Force. The first Jedi to gargle my balls. 
the first... Well, okay, if he's the first, is it midichlorians, lower chlorians, or higher chlorians if he's nice. the first? Um, I don't know. I think they're probably still mid at that point. He's the first person to make a mid. The, the, what will really be mid is the film at best. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I also... I hope it's it mentions good. in this good. article on like, ABC News... The, comp- the company had put a pause on new Star Wars movies after the release of Lies of Skywalker. A film that was set to be released this year, Rogue Squadron was scrapped, as were some others that had been early developed. We lost oh! Rogue Squadron! No! We lost Rogue Squadron for this? Oh. Not for this. No, no, they scrapped no, I mean, it like, They scrapped it after Rise of by Skywalker. For this, I mean, like, the whole situation. But... but- yeah. They cost me a Rogue Squadron movie. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. And it's like, why did you bring this up in the article? Why did you have to, like, just rake your nails across the chalkboard? I could have you not could've... known this. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you could have just... just... Actually, no, I apologize. We could have talked about Picard and just accepted the fact that there were three Star Wars movies. Son of a now, bitch. I'm you know so what I've been sorry. thinking about Rascal Flight for, like, a week or two lately? Like, oh. they've been coming up in my brain. The, the thing about this article as well is they, they say they put a pause on new Star Wars films. Yeah, okay, you could have stopped there. And then they they say specifically Rogue Squadron, and then some others. Why yeah. did they? Because they're feeling just as upset as I am, hopefully. And they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This, this will really like you got to kick the you've got to kick the audience in the guts to remember to remind to them be, why they are. Do you know like, what? I reckon they'll still make a Rogue Squadron one day, and maybe it'll be actually good. Because I reckon if they made it, if if they made it using the same philosophy that they were making fucking the sequel films, it would have been shit. Yes. Actually, no, they did make Rogue One during Rogue that time. Good, so yeah. Rogue One was great. Basically, I feel like Star Wars right now is a complete gamble. You can get a Rogue One or an Andor, or you can get other shit. Um, I'm really excited for the new Star Wars films, though. As a, as a person who's... Yeah. I'm currently in, like, my peak Star Wars right now. That's why I have to fucking bring this shit up. It's... Um, yeah, I... I... I'm excited because I literally do not think they can get any worse. I reckon they can... <laughs> uh, like, like, I think of the sequels, <laughs> and I'm like, that was so terrible that... I cannot wait for m- for new movies because I know they will be better. <laughs> That's what they said about the prequels, John. The prequels are good, though. The, the prequels, prequels are really the pre- good. The prequels are good uh, no. for what they are, but they are weird. They are vehicles to get us to the start of a new hope. Yes. And g- the, given that time, given the, that scope, that they've done a really good job. The premise... No, I would actually disagree with that. I, I think that's where it failed the most, right? Um, okay, maybe not the most. I, I think that... The, the way that they got to the point was let's set up some, some character relationships and then just sort of throw them in the bin pretty quickly right at the end. I don't know. It's... Eh, no, I really liked... I really liked... I, the, see, the prequels are fun, right? The prequels are a lot of fucking fun and yep. they have some really cool shit that is very much how I think about Star Wars. Um, they are, they're also tonally really weird compared to the original trilogy and I think that was okay. That worked out. I don't think that the sequel trilogy is going to get that same level of, like, spike up in, like, love in no, the next ten I years. No, I do not think it will. I think it will just... The prequels got good when the people who watched them as kids grew up a little bit and were like, no, I love that. That's something I enjoyed as a kid. Um, and that's, like, that's why they've peaked the mm. way they have. I don't think we're going to get that same peak of kids that enjoyed the sequel movies because I just don't think... I think that kids who, like, would grow up theoretically and enjoy the sequel movies are probably the kids who are also enjoying the prequel movies like yeah. they're probably meme culture has changed how you go memes. about watching yeah. shit yeah um no the, the prequel is just an ex- uh, excuse for them to make the Clone Wars TV show mm. um which I've been watch. I've started watching like halfway through season 2 and it's excellent Clone Wars uh, slaps like I was like okay kids show let's see how- nah nah it's just the fucking clone- good the Clone Wars does slaps uh from like but it is it was also like if you step back to before what the Clone Wars like was determined right before we get the current clone wars idea the idea of a jedi based clone war where you've got so so all you know about like obi-wan and like and about anakin skywalker when you watch episode four is that they were in the clone wars and that they're fucking jedi which implies when that you the watch clone episode wars, four epi- so episode four mentions the clone wars right oh okay yeah. as something you that my like, father in the yeah, clone you wars with my father in the clone wars oh. uh, and that in imp- like that not knowing what the clone wars is it's a, a war which had clones in it is the least interesting answer you can go with. I feel like, well, I feel like it was a war defined by the fact that one side used clones. Yeah, but like, again, that's that's what I'm saying. That's one. Because yeah. clones so, didn't really, so weren't used before that I've, and weren't really used I after. Think my favorite thing from Mandalorian, or not my favorite. I haven't thing, watched my, any of the Mandalorian. Of the, the things I really like about the newest stuff, it goes out of its way to portray that, that the clone war was fucked up, right? People don't like droids and there's a reason why. Um, 
it, if anything, the droid wars would have made a lot more sense to call that. Like, I feel like it's just because droids were. It seems like droids were more unanimous and like, but like used the, in the combat. Droids were the horror, right? Droids were used yeah. in combat before the clones. They're not meant to be though. Like droid, droids are like droids in combat is still a terrifying thing that you don't. You, you there is no combat droids in uh in the in the sorry in the original trilogy. Except IG-88, who is a terrifying bounty hunter. Yeah, yeah. IG-88, the IG-88 like, The Assassin idea of droids. droids for war is... like that's That should be a big deal to a setting, right? Yeah. It, like, it feels like the Clone Wars really should, could have been, like, the Techno Union Rebellion. I, I'm going to be like, honest. Like, the droids... Like, the P-1 battle droids are kind of... Yeah, no, they're, they're not they're shit, very right? good. And, they're and the shit. way that they were written is very bad, and I, I agree with that. But okay, like, but in the Clone Wars, like, they're actually written great. Uh, no, I... I mostly saw early Clone Wars. I'll, I'll, I'll I've I'll. only been watching early Clone Wars. I haven't watched... I don't know shit past, like, season two, okay. or, like, roughly. I still love the, the, the battle droids. They are lovable goofballs. They are I the comedic relief character. Are you a literal you child? <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> But I I don't know. There's just some funny goofs in there. There's like one. There's I, like what they. T- there's two. There's two. There's like a bunch of droids carrying around, and they like pick up this droid head. And he's like he's died. It's like, oh, this one died. Uh, don't worry. He he was an older model hooked up to a central computer. Well, uh, he's not as good as us. We're independent thinkers. Roger, 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 Roger. Like, yeah, no, that's a good bit. Okay, like, there's good I, bits. I, I, won't, I won't say that there's not good bits with the battle droids, right? But there's such a waste of potential. No, I would have said that they went really, they went really hard on the Roger Roger jokes. Yes, right. Like if, and uh, this is probably to do with the way that I consume media, which is all the time, all at once. I'm just gonna like burn myself out on that content. Mm. Right, I'm just gonna like consume an entire like. I have recently consumed two seasons of Archer just because I needed to. Yeah, um, that's how I'm with video games. Mm. Um, but like when you go through that and you're getting that same joke, like. You know, within I don't even want to say recent memory. Within like the same day, and it's come, it starts getting repetitive. It doesn't. And... It it yeah. It didn't feel too repetitive. I I've been watching. Okay. I watched like maybe one or two episodes a day ish. To, to me, it's 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 almost the opposite as well. It's it's you've got you've chosen to make your comic relief out of what should be one of the biggest elements in the setting. Right? Is a droid army that is at war with the like current government. Right? That's. The, like uh, that's an existential threat. Yeah, like the level of like panic you could have by having a true, like a truly powerful hive mind, no, um, no goofs army. Not even just that, but just an army of things that follow orders. I will say, yeah. I will. You've s- got the droids. They 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 are not only like comically incompetent, and I I will pay that right as a source of humor. Them being bad at their jobs, I will pay to a degree. Mm-hmm. But it's that they do things like give up and surrender. At that point, you didn't like. Why yeah. have you built these? <laughs> there is, there's no, there's no level of fear that demands the creation of a clone army, um, in a way that like causes you to skirt around like a bunch of the problems mm. that the, like the spontaneous creation of an army. I will has. say, the clone army I, is also just sort of a, a lesser threat than the droid army in many ways. Well, the droid army is like so much bigger than the clone army that's the thing yeah no no but I, I will say about the droids is that they do not ever feel like a threat in like watching Clone Wars TV show they never feel like a threat which I think is alright because it's the main kind of type of enemy it means like because if they were a threat then every episode would just be like oh yeah there's a fuck ton of droids we gotta deal with but this way there's like oh they've got a cool new they've got this new weapon or they've got a spy that like you know yeah. Uh, that so, lets the droids know where our location so did is. You ever, did you ever see the original Clone Wars animated movie? Like I the, did the not. One that was for the start of the Clone Wars animated series. Oh wait, the animate the uh, one where they introduced the Ahsoka. One? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I watched one. that oh, the 3D one. I watched yeah. that many, many times yeah, as so a kid. Right at the like, start of that, so you've many got times. like the clones in a desperate, like last ditch defense. Yeah, yeah. And there's droids advancing on them slowly, and like th- that was, in my opinion, one of the best depictions of the Clone Wars as a horrible thing to be involved in. Yeah. Um, and they sort of burned that after that movie, <laughs> like, mm. and and the the clones did like the clones get built back up and become very interesting in that series. I think so, but I think that the droids don't, and it sort of sidelines what again t- to me could have been a really interesting part of it. But again, even even then, the clones just being clones of a guy who's pretty good at stuff is a failing. Like, it's it's 
once it's there, like, they've done well with it, but it's like, God, that's really the best they could do? They introduce a shapeshifter in the same movie as the clones, right? As a shapeshifting bounty hunter. If you're going to make an army of, of clones of a bounty hunter, why not the fucking shapeshifter? Probably hard to get him. No. Zam Wessel's like a much like lower got. tier bounty hunter, right? Yeah, Zam Wessel gets got in that Zam movie. Wessel gets got, right? So the, like the it's like yeah, we we got we got fucking Django cuz he's the best at his job, but it's like I don't give a shit if the, if he's the best at his job. Imagine having an army of people who could look like anyone. That, and Zam Wessel was honestly more, wasted on that movie in general. I agree. And moreover, like a whole part of the clone thing is that they are about a lot of their combat abilities are like imparted yeah they're, they're sort of right, built they're in programmed in ways right which means that you didn't need uh, well, almost like Jango how effect. you would program in well fucking no, droids. like you yeah. know but you if, even Jango... if you're programming them like okay. you may as well get the best start so, at what point do you go i need Django fett's innate physiology or do i just go to like find the mr Alderon of the setting some kind of hero bodybuilder who's incredibly jacked and just start from that bodybuilder template. doesn't necessarily mean good fight but again, again, things. yeah but you can impart that shapeshifter yeah you've got the physiology right? you need there right why don't you why don't you pick a species that is that can survive in literally all in like extreme temperatures Right? Why don't we? Why aren't us? Why aren't snowtroopers like? Wookies? And like shapeshifters would be another reason why the droids would be reasonable why as a pick that would be fucked Wookiees up. Why you clone and then impart clone yeah. knowledge on that? Fucking Wookies, bud. Right? Fucking Wookies. Right? People Imagine would... if the clone army was Wookies. Holy shit! I never even fucking thought of that. And that would also, again, like in the same way that droids being like prejudiced against in in mm. the original trilogy makes sense in post, right? Because you've yeah. got a, you've just had a droid war. Wookiees being, like, subjugated would make more sense if they had just been the clone yeah. army. Like, imagine if the clones were all, like, hyper-competent warriors because they were Wookiees, right? And so you've got Chewbacca, who is, like, a freed slave because he was a fucking forced soldier. I mean... Yeah. I mean, he, I he was he I, was a freed slave in, like, the solo movie or just, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I understand these, like, world-building uh, kind it, of things, but... I don't know, just watching the show, I, like, it makes enough it, sense. Yeah. And it's like, the, the you know, the clones are these cool, like, soldier types, you know, they're kind of, they're lovable, whatnot, but they're serious, oh, love, and like the clones, these, you know, classic right? soldiers. The, while the battle droids play this more comic relief part, and like, have that kind of, sometimes they're comic relief, sometimes that, like, kind of unfeeling, kind of just marching mm. zombie kind of thing. Um, and then... You've got all the other characters, too, who are all excellent. Like, there's not a single character in that show who I'm like, oh, I don't love them, you know? Fair enough. Uh, and then there's also Jar Jar, who I fuck <laughs> off. Uh, Jar Jar episodes be like... Jar Jar episodes I don't like. I don't like the Jar Jar mm. episodes. Anyway, what's this Picard? I've had enough time... So, okay. I've had enough of uh, so people you, you want to track away from the war, huh? Yeah. Slandering my Let's, Star Wars. I want well, to hear... If we're going to get into uh, Deep Space Nine a little bit, we're going to go back into war, but we'll get there. We'll get war. There. <laughs> um, war never changes. So Jean-Luc Picard mm -hmm. uh, is, is the Star Trek... Uh, he's the captain from the Next Generation series. Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's some kind of hyper-competent... Um, you know, but he's a bit of a, like a warrior poet. How do we know about him then? If he's from the next generation, yeah, like it hasn't come out uh, yet. I see nice, you nice. Did um, fun fact: Picard season three, episode two, is the next generation. Um, great bit there, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll uh, pay it in this case. Anyway, but yeah, um, so he was the captain from from one of the biggest Star Trek series, yeah. and like I know, I know the, the next generation. Deep yeah, and like the next are... generation is where Star Trek was doing what it's doing on purpose as a new thing, like. I, it's where a lot of people start now because the original series is very. I don't want to give it a descriptor. It's it's old. It shows its age very heavily. Um, yeah, no, it's it's and it's a lot. Like it, it's it's formative, but it didn't. It was they were just sort of making it on the fly, right? And TNG is like the next generation is is I think a pretty good successor. Like mm. there are people who got upset about you know which one's better, the original series or uh, the next generation. But there was people on both sides of that, and they do both have, like, arguments for it, right? Yeah. Um, and it was the same sort of, you know, Monster of the Week format. You're on a spaceship, you're going into the middle of nowhere, you're going to interact with the planet and fucking make first contact, whatever's going on. Yeah. It's typical um, tracking in the stars. Really funny is the, the perception of the different captains there. You've got um, Captain Kirk, who people see as, like, a, a wild man, like, you know, the, the sex fiend, fucking going out and, and having sex with alien ladies and being a fucking, like 
big old meat head. Mm-hmm. Um, he is like canonically a huge fucking nerd. I think I think I saw a meme about this. Yeah, he's he's like a, <laughs> yeah. a big old fucking dork uh, who who like reads books all the time and knows knows human history and knows to, his history. Yeah, yeah, he can quote like literature and shit. And like it, he looks like a big fucking uh, big sports boy because he's next to his science officer Spark, who's a Vulcan. Yeah, uh, logic nerd. Um, and you've got Picard, who is seen as this like warrior poet, like stoic. He 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 does have a lot of like big like speeches he gives. Um, but because he's next to Riker, he looks like a nerd. He's a crazy man. He he fucking he got his heart injured in a knife fight at a bar, and that's like a recurring element of his plotline is that he has a heart condition that he hates getting treated because it's embarrassing. That reminds me because of he a... got in a knife fight at a bar I was because a... he was cheating at a fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a I was at a, like a fucking concert or like a gig, a show yep. for some local bands and. Uh... One of the guys the was, like, really fucking passionate and stuff. And uh, I missed the first half of their set or whatnot. But he came out and was like, this song, this next song, it's about getting stabbed in the face. And it's based on a true story. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Or, like, you know, based on experience or something. Uh, I think they, yeah. Which I found really, this yeah. really good bit. But yeah, so so Picard, like you know, he's he's been through some shit. He got turned into a Borg for a little while. Uh, got got roboted. God, mm-hmm. um, Borgs. And well, so, three five nine was an inside job. And I love so Borgs. In the last few years, they've released a new se- uh, series called Picard. I've heard. Uh, I've it's, heard. It's about none other than your boy. Is it about Riker? Yeah, actually, it is a little it bit. Is a little bit now. <laughs> um, sorry, I've just got to. Um, so Picard is is a show about yeah the. the it's about Cam is Picard. currently talking about Picard while also doing his insulin shots. Yeah, uh, give me a sec. It's all right. So Picard is about Picard, uh-huh. um, Jean Luc specifically, and like what happens. <laughs> Jean Luc specifically, not the other Picard family. Okay. Other, yeah, um, but it is it is about like what do you do when um, drunken sailor. Like, it's Sorry. about a sad old man. Yeah, it's about a sad old man who's past his prime and like what does John Luc Picard do in his old age as so he tends the, to death? The first season is about uh, is about. What's the word? Uh, fucking what date is? Androids, yeah. right? It's about it's about um, like are robots people? Yeah. A question Do they dream of electric sheep? Pretty solidly answered in the in in the show originally with data. Mm. Yeah. Uh, at the very least, it came down on a solid like data's people. He's our boy, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the answer uh, so is yes. The ma- yeah, you would you would think. And the main framing of the uh, of Picard season one is that uh, one of the big setting elements they introduce is that uh, the homeworld of the what's their fucking Romulan name? Romulans. Who are sort of like the dark elves to Vulcans? Uh, the homeworld of the Romulans, their sun fucking exploded. Oh Jesus! And Starfleet was like, "Well, sucks to be them." And John Luke Picard was like, "What? No, we should be doing everything we can to help them." And got a little fleet of whoever he could get together together to go save as oh, many people as he could, which was a tiny fraction of them because their fucking sun exploded. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Starfleet just sort of fucked around and didn't help, which is a major kick in the teeth to the setting for one. Yeah. Um, so, so the I know it's so sorry, little no, about Star fair. Trek. The thing that I like about Star Trek, or one of the things I like about Star Trek, is that it is relentlessly, or at least the early stuff, relentlessly optimistic. Starfleet is a science like group, basically that they're, they're like specializing in first contact and in scientific exploration. They're not a military. Yeah, the Federation is about the ideal good. Yeah, the it's Federation about, are, it's are, trekking, are, they're not good fighting. boys. Yeah. Yes, it's got about got about going for a walk and interacting with the nature of the universe. And even I your assume. your you know your monster of the week show, right, where you go to a new place and you interact with new guys. It wasn't like let's go beat up a new guy every week. It's let's go interact with new people and see what their problems are and see if we can help. Yeah, and right? when you're interacting with like, well, what if Starfleet's the problem? It's always about trying to take shortcuts for the greater good, or yeah, right. right? It's about it's asking a moral question. Yeah, and and it was like you know if if you're not down for like being asked moral questions every week, it's probably not a show you're going to enjoy. So is like Starfleet being the quote unquote bad guys in this Picard thing? So is it kind of like, hey guys, we're going to ignore the original setting a bit just so we can make Picard look really good? Or it's just sort of they, like a. I think they needed a vehicle to get Picard out of Starfleet. Yeah. Um, and the way they chose to do it was to have Starfleet do a fucky-wucky. That's like um, the Assassin's Creed Rogue of Star Trek. Mm. Oh, actually, I haven't shit. played Assassin's Creed Rogue, Rogue. I know nothing about it. Uh, see, only Assassin's Creed I've played. Actually, no, I've played, <laughs> I played, uh, fu- I played fucking Odyssey. 
as well. Anyway, so they 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 yeah, it's to they want to get him create, out of Yeah, they create a distance between Picard and Starfleet, which is odd because he's just old. Yeah, they could have just had him be too old. Yeah, too old. But it's it's that like you've changed the setting from somewhere where you've got this like optimistic and like pro like humanitarian force, right? It's it's humanity as a humanitarian force, and you've just sort of said they're not even going to try. They the 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 industry they've got here, their whole setup, they don't care. And, like, the Romulans have been, like, at war with humanity and the Federation on and off. But it's still... It's like, such a, like... You've changed the fundamental tone of the setting with this. Yeah, this is this is coming from a setting that has made peace with the Klingons, space orcs... Yeah, of a right? setting of, of, of a race, realistically. At least at the time for original yeah. thing. Like, a lot of... Um, one of the major, like, elements of the original series... Sorry, of, not the, of, um, of the Next Generation is that one of the main crew members is a Klingon... Uh, who's been it? raised by humans. Yeah. But it's it builds into then in uh, Deep Space Nine, the Klingons do ally with humanity repeatedly. And I think all, throughout all of uh, the next generation, they are allied to the Klingons. At the very least, Friends. non-aggression or... Yeah. But yeah, right? Like, we've, they've, gone from the, they've gone from the setting of we've taken quite possibly the most militant anti-Federation kind of civilization. Yeah, war decades. And, yeah. Right, and we've brought them into the fold. Yeah, all right. They've and joined then, the Republic. I mean, the space. So, thing. yeah, and they haven't joined the Federation. There's, there's like tension there because uh, for, for the next gen. But like by the time Picard is going through, right? They, you know, there is like the idea of a Klingon being a protagonist rather than an antagonist by this point in time is a big deal. It's and cool, then, right? Well, in the same way that in the original series they had a, a black woman on the command crew and they had a Russian man on the command crew during the Cold War. Mm. That was a big statement. Like, Star Trek has, has always been very political about what it's doing, which is why Picard hurts so bad. So, Picard season one, you've got... Uh, your setup is, is to do with... with uh, Roboys. Roboys, right? And the whilst they do in... Like, they decide, yes, we should have Roboys be people. They can stay. Roboys just is, being robots, is, right? That is just uh, being androids. So, like, androids. people bots. Yeah, yeah. Right? okay. Uh, it is also, like, it makes it explicit that androids can and, like, have the ability to just annihilate everyone at any time. It, it's like androids are an existential nightmare threat. Yeah. But we're going to do the right thing and decide to keep them around. And it's it hits really weird. It's It doesn't come off as we're going to do the right thing. It comes off as we know that androids are the good guys from the original stuff. We're not going to have this be a thought-out moral quandary. We're just going to go... Yeah, I think, I, from my like, standpoint, I looked at it as kind of like, we want to draw a comparison between and between synthetic life in the form of androids and synthetic life in the form of the Borg. Yeah. And we want to say that these two are the same, so that Picard can come in and say, no, they are not. But they forgot to make them not be the same. Yeah. Uh, it's... it's it, it lands very much on, the, like, the oppressed so people... So, wait, sorry. Like... The, What's the so they were trying to get the, the androids and the Borg to be to be like from equivalent. a writing standpoint. So they were they were trying Drawing to parallels. they were trying to draw those parallels and then separate that out into into different things and uh, a big a big part of it. So they they've sort of walked themselves dick first into the whole like the oppressed people who people don't like trust or like. That's because of their nightmare powers that can ruin everything, which happens in a lot of of media. It's just it's just not very like interesting writing at that point. Yeah. It's like, if you're going to oppress someone because if you don't oppress them, they have the ability to literally summon an eldritch god into your, like, homeroom, that's understandable. Right? It's not necessarily good, but it's like, that is... It's less like, interesting. You are allowed to be wary of this power. Well, yeah, it's like, right? I think we should oppress the guys that are currently holding a grenade in their hand at all times. I think that there should be rules as to where you can go if you've got a grenade in your hand. I'm conf I'm still confused at what this is exactly about. So, Where did the board come into this? Oh, the, because we're, again, it's, they're machines. They're, they're, they're the machines. So, so basically, it turns out that androids can literally summon an eldritch sort of machine god. Yeah. God, yeah, they never touched That's, on that again. They never touch on that again because they can't. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's like, okay, the androids can summon an eldritch machine god that will annihilate the known universe yeah. functionally. Um, but they won't, so it's fine. When, like, they did, though... But they they did that for a little bit. They got stopped, but they were doing that. You have to you have to just you have to acknowledge so, okay. that that happened. Now. So so in your opinion, what is the moral 
quandary or the tried moral quandary that fails here and then what would like if you could rewrite it to be like actually Ooh. interesting what would it be so for one let's get that comparison out yeah uh, I, I, I think that the, the premise of making Picard, at least the way that they did, was pretty, pretty dog shit, right? I don't think that they needed to make it, given that they were going to make it. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I've just noticed, I just misread, misread something and thought you were trying to run a Homestuck event at 5.30 a.m. Um, that's not what that says, though. You've just no. got the P really close to the M. <laughs> no. Well, so if, if, if you hear any background noise in this recording, it's because Emas is being loud reasonably loud i've seen them louder but oh, like yeah, it's sure. it's quite audible uh as is happening a lot recently i think they have a fucking uh big event on soon um so they so, care less about us so the moral quandary they're going for less right is nothing. they're drawing parallels to oppressed groups of people so they're saying you know like your your lgbt people your people of color yeah right? uh, your people with like mental health issues they're saying all right it's but the which you know that and they're saying like you shouldn't oppress these people you shouldn't discriminate against them is, yeah. is the intended goal mm -hmm. but it comes off as you shouldn't oppress lgbt people and like people of color even though they are dangerous oh yeah no they're 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 a threat to society ah, okay but you shouldn't oppress them because that would be wrong and it's like that's not what that's not the situation here no yeah okay. that's actually a, a, your okay now that you've spelled it out for me, I'm like, ah. Uh, yeah, it's like, that I, doesn't hit properly as a moral, yeah. because it's, it's something no. that you can disagree with on reasonably fair terms. And be like, no, I think that we should oppress people, because they're a threat to the society, to the, the order of society, yeah. right? Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hit very well there. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Picard gets put into a robot at the end of it. He's, he's an android now, which is a, a choice that they make that they then have to fucking follow uh, up on every other season, but they kept his heart condition, because otherwise he'd be too cool. Um, so season, you, season two... Uh, we've put you into this... <laughs> season two as of Picard As soon as I let is, the weakness of my flesh, mm -hmm. I decided to... To become a robot and also keep the weakness of my flesh. Well, they, they did this to him. He didn't choose to have that done. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to call him General uh, Grievous Picard now. But yeah, so season yeah, right. two is uh, the Borg are back and they're doing some new new things. And it it opens Hopefully with they're not Borg. John Luc Picard is a guy who's had a good number of seasons of content made functionally. Like, you know, not necessarily all about him, but he is a major character in a lot of Star Trek. Yeah, yes. Right? So, and, and Star Trek being the way it is, there's a lot of moral quandaries, a lot of, like, psychological shit. S John Luke Picard's psychological state has been pretty thoroughly explored, right? His, the way that he handles things. So, they needed to introduce some new trauma for him. So, they made it that his mother had some severe, like, psychological conditions, and I believe, like, tried to kill him a couple of times. Jesus. And they just sort of yeah. retroactively placed in this mother trauma... In the same season as they sent the cast back in time for Borg reasons. And it turns out that those are unrelated things. Yeah. So that is just trauma that he had all the time, the whole time that never got brought up. Um, so season, my, my, my view of season two of Picard was that it, it was like, oh shit, I, we need to get as much of the like... Bull, like as much of our bullshit stuff out of the way as quickly as we can mm. right we need borg we need q we love q it's everybody right, loves the q the plot really does for most of season one and two seem to be a how do we do cool star trek thing how we go oh, look it's q yeah. you like q yeah look it's the borg you know the borg we've written a set piece yeah like no at season one and two is we've written a set piece where um you know picard in a small shuttle ship faces down a fleet of romulan uh, spies ready mm. to destroy the planet and Picard will make this one great stand before you know something will happen to save the day I don't know but like that's our set piece yeah right and they're like alright how do we get to here and yeah it, it feels very like disconnected it sounds like they're yeah they're just kind of like trying to revisit old concept from your description yeah. they're just trying to okay. re redo old Star so, Trek things that give character development to a character it doesn't really need anymore revisiting yeah. old content is not something that I am inherently opposed yeah, to sure. I am a Dragon Ball fan every Dragon Ball movie is just rephrasing the exi a different mo a different part of the series in a new in a slightly different way rebuild of Evangelion yeah right um, like the Dragon Ball, the Lord Slug movie for Dragon Ball Z is just the King Piccolo arc. 
Um, okay, revisiting something as a here's a graphical update and like cond- condensation of yeah. it into a new thing. No, Part but, of it is also so, but then right. like that works for that content. Yeah, right. My point is, I um like this is the content I enjoy, and I as a person, I love Q. We rate the Borg; it's all good stuff. But mm. even I was a little turned around and it, turned away from Picard season two. It sounds like they're not doing anything interesting with it. It's then, also or? a major shift from the Star Trek format. So, mm. so one of the things with Star Trek is that it's always been a very like yes, you've got a captain, right? But it's an ensemble cast, and there'll be episodes where the captain's not in it or not important in it. Yeah, right. You've got your like there's no one main character to Star Trek. Oh, there, there didn't used to be, right? Um, and you'll get a long form story told over a lot of episodes. Like there's there's filler episodes because you're running Monster of the Week. There is no core plot, yeah. right? Um, and that gives the characters time to develop and to interact and to grow. Yeah, uh, and, and like especially in Deep Space Nine where they don't even go everywhere. Like they're on the same station the whole time, which means that the stories are even more focused. Deep Space Nine had the value of problems are coming to you, though. Yes. Well, you have to have problems happen, right? Yeah. Conflict is important for a story, but yeah. Um, so does so, it change to, like, just one Well, now character? it's about Picard, and it's it's not like... Because Picard, you know, he's an important guy. He's he's a big deal. He's a captain. He'll become a, an admiral for certain. He's, he's important because of what he's doing, right? He's mm. important because he's in charge of the ship, which is doing stuff. But Star Trek Picard is, one, yeah, it's, it's about him. And it means that he has to be inherently special. It's not that he's important because he's in a position to do good. It's that he's important because he's John Luke Picard. Yeah. He's Season important. two literally opens with, "Hey, we found a space rift that's asking for Picard by name." It's like it's like fucking the bad parts of Doctor Who when it becomes all about how special the Doctor is, and that solves problems in and of itself. Oh, no! Thank you for that, Cam. Sorry, man. Got reminded but I'm of right, aren't Doctor I? Who right you are the, the new like the new different Borg come out of a time rift and say we need John Luke Picard actually not even we need Locutus the Borg version of him who is cool yeah it's no we, we need John Luke Picard we need the captain because he's important and special so we spent a decent ton- ton- bunch of time bitching about season one and two but season three is so far has been good. really solid yeah oh okay That's season, right. season yeah. three has been solid so far it, it's skirting the edge of what I would consider reasonable for, like... How far in are you? uh, I think a good four, six episodes, I think, in? All right, because I watched episode eight last night. Right. I don't think I'm fully up to date. Right. But you've, like, you've met, like... You've you've established the fact that, like, it does really appear to be, oh, we're getting the gang back together. Yeah, we're getting the gang back together, which I don't hate that, right? Getting the gang back together, that can be fine, and they're doing new shit. They're interacting well. mm. Star Trek Heist? Getting the gang back together? A little bit. A little bit. So, like, okay, my, my, my main value for season, Star Trek season three is they are not <clears throat> getting the gang gang back together because it would be fun to have a LeVar Burton cameo. Yeah. All of these characters are coming back with purpose and We points. need someone who can do things LeVar Burton can do. Yeah. And we know LeVar Burton. Let's go see if he'll help us. Yeah. Right? That's better than, ah, look who we found here on the special place that we are. It's our old friend LeVar Burton. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the way that, that they... That doesn't feel like facts. a real name. LeVar Burton. Well, yeah. that's the actor's name, yeah. Oh, really? Um, Geordie LaForge. Yeah. Geordie LaForge. Geordie LaForge is the character's name. Yeah. Geordie LaForge. LeVar Burton. How do you spell that? Geordie LaForge or LeVar Burton? LeVar Burton. L-A-V-A-R? Yeah. Okay, wait. No, this is making more sense. Yeah. I was imagining like... Yeah, anyway. I was imagining like three words, like le. The way they oh, yeah. introduced, yeah, no, this makes um, sense. Sorry, Lavar Burton, I didn't mean to like make fun of, you, be mean about your name. You're a goddamn hero. Um, but <laughs> so, like the way that they introduced Seven of Nine in season one and two, it was just like, oh, who could this Fenris Ranger be? It's oh, it's Seven of Nine. Um, and now Seven can be here to talk about like Borg things with Picard, and it was just kind of like. I understood why they brought Seven in, but the way that Seven got brought in was just kind Clunky, of... Clunky, ham-handed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, right? Like, Seven, the way they brought that in Seven was Seven of just, Nine is a character who was... Seven, uh, like, the, I believe, like it was like, like a really weird jump from, like, Return got, of the Jedi. Yeah, uh, Seven of Nine is a character who got Borged as a child. What does Bo- get Borg? So the Borg are, Robo'd. like, uh, robo-people. They're, like, okay. they're sort of... They, so you're they not Borg referring you, to, so like... They're, they're, they're called Borg. It's... It, I don't know if it's intended as a shorthand for cyborg or not, but they're cyborgs. They I get sort of bored. Have a Borg hive mind. Good of our fucking delicious Borgo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't worry, I've, ma- I've made all these bits, uh, and so they they assimilate like people yeah. into the into the Borg collective, mm. um, and like you become part of the machine, right? Um, and so Seven of Nine was Borged as a child and then unborged 
and there's a lot of like prejudice because the Borg were terrifying. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't take. I can't take, I can't take the Borg. Borg. <laughs> we are we are going through like five different series of yeah. backstory because that's Picard is that special. Yes. <laughs> um, like the, the thing is that yeah, there's there's backstory there. That's the thing about season three is that it's not making up new shit for Picard oh, to do. It is it is looking into unresolved old plot lines. Winslet, I bet you were very very happy when uh, when Moriarty turned up. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, like I from love... Sherlock? Yeah, yeah. So, so what? one of the oh, one yeah, of the next generation villains, yeah, is uh, Data being an android is in the uh, the hollow deck, right? He's, yeah. he's playing games, uh, and they like he comes to the realization that he can't play the Sherlock Holmes games the way that they're intended because he's too smart and he knows the books, oh. so he can just trivially solve the mysteries, right? So he oh. asks the computer for a villain capable of defeating him, so that will have meaning. Yeah. And so that's a big deal because Data is smarter than most machines. Uh, so the villain that it creates, uh, it, it basically it soups up Moriarty to the point where Moriarty is immediately aware that he's part of a fucking simulation. That's great, right? It's it's really cool shit, right? Yeah, I love that's holodeck that's really interesting. Moriarty. Hol- holodeck Moriarty is is a cool guy, and like they, he ends up basically realizing like they don't d- d- destroy. He wins, right? Mm. He functionally has to surrender because he's like, okay, I've I've won this scenario, but I can't leave the holodeck. And so they basically say, look, we'll put you in, like, in storage, and we'll find a way to get you out of the holodeck. Right? You're a yeah. person now. That's that's not actually a Whoops, question. Whoops, I accidentally You're told a the computer guy. to create a sentient You've made being. life, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, like, they sort of put him in storage. I think he comes up once later, and they put him back in. But, yeah, they never really dealt with that. And he comes back for Picard as, like, a thing where, like, oh, they found a... They, they, they've done things with him. He has a story that has continued. That's, that's cool. That's nice, That's really right? cool. And that's a, that was a dangling thread of... Because I'd asked when I saw those episodes, because uh, I watched them, you know, in the last couple of years, I was like, oh, do they ever do anything with him again? And I go, no, he's just sort of in there for now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's that's like... That's working with the sandbox you've been given, right? That's... You've been given a setup. Like, you've been given your, your world. You've you got to set up. you got to, like, then do the... you got to do the l- dunk, you know? You're playing with it rather than sweeping it aside and building your own sandcastle, right? You've got... Yeah. Here's, the, here's the terrain that you've got. Work with it. And yeah, that's no. where I think, like, uh, yeah, Picard seasons one and two really fucking suffered. Because mm. they were just sort of sweeping aside what they had to mil- make their own shit. And at that point, don't use the existing characters for it. Uh, yeah. It's the same thing with Star Trek Discovery. I'm, I'm going to just jump clean into Discovery. Yeah, if you go, don't mind. Um, oh I didn't end up watching all of Discovery. I couldn't stick it. S- season the the main <sighs> problem with season one and two of Discovery is that it's set in the past. It's set just before the original series. Star Trek Discovery is about a science ship that has a like super high tech jump drive that's better than anything you ever see in Star Trek before or after. Uh huh. And it's Hyper-space got all this high tech shit that's you know more more new and important and like. And the the villains that they've got are. Uh, are the Klingons again but they're, they've updated them it would have worked almost, like I, would, I, th- I think it would have been spectacular had it been set after uh, Deep Space Nine yeah this makes this is weird why is so it the, the, it's, yeah it's a Klingon like the Klingons are worried about their culture being dissolved into the Federation and so they go to war with the Federation again except that it then ends that like that war ends but they're still at war with the Federation in than in the original series the timeline's all fucked yeah spock gets bought into it for season two and it's like fucking i get it there's spock the the main character because there's a main character now uh spock's secret sister um, yeah that's right spock what? already had a secret brother that came up in the original show right and at the end of that episode he goes sorry for not bringing him up captain kirk i'll never lie to you about like things again uh, and it's like you know it's important that i share those things with you no he had a secret sister he had brought up as well they hung out <laughs> Uh, quite heavily and then she disappeared um uh, he just forgot it's fine whereas the next sorry whereas deep space nine you know the klingons were on allied to the federation to fight uh, an existential threat having it be set after that so the klingons are worried about being assimilated into the federation and so you've got a, a fringe group of klingons going we can't let that happen we have to preserve our own identity as a as a as a species as an empire yeah works really well there and it also means that you're not stuck with timeline problems, you've got your new content. Yeah, you can it's like, build why did forward, they put it right? in behind? At the end of season two, uh, I, I don't give a shit about spoiling these. Yeah, go I'm for just going to do this. Do, 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 do. Um, at the end of season two of Discovery, they accidentally fuck up and get teleported a couple of hundred years into the future. So they're now after the Star Trek timeline. 
exactly where they should have been all along because they realized how fucking dumb <laughs> it was to not be there. And it's like, no, you know what? I'll pay it. They, they realized the decision that they'd fucked Fine, up and they yeah. fixed it. Um, I think the best thing about Discovery, though, is season one being bad until it becomes good retroactively. <laughs> so, so season one of Discovery has a captain who is an absolute, like, monster. He's a sack of shit. Yeah. And again, we're talking Star Trek. The captain is meant to be your, like, beacon of, like, being a good and righteous person. And this dude, he's got, like, his weapons locker full of forbidden weapons tech. He's he's making, like, the will sacrifice people to do... I like, feel like that could be interesting, like, subversion of, like, it, Star it Trek. It could be, but it's played really weirdly. And for the whole first season, it's it's sort of played straight as, like, wow, they're really going with the captain just being like this, huh? Um, And it's it's really, like off-putting it, it's it's the kind of thing where it's i was confident that it was just that the writing team wasn't like wasn't coming at this from the same place i was right it's like they've just misunderstood why star trek is like this and they've decided let's subvert it by making the captain an awful guy right let's make the captain a militant guy uh who's like you know here to fight the klingons he's pro-war because yeah, uh, i wonder how many i mean how many people writing star trek were like writing the original ones probably none the, right yeah um but the thing is is that it turns out that the writers understood the whole time and one of the reveals right near the end of that first season is that uh is when they go to the mirror universe something yeah. that has existed in star trek it's, it's the evil mirror universe where there's you but evil or and sometimes yeah like right like it's, it's it's a it's a worse place humanity is an evil empire there they end up collapsing later on and becoming yeah. like you know on the run that's really cool it's neat like the mirror universe gets fleshed out throughout the old series is a lot and so they go to the mirror universe, um, and it is revealed that the captain has been mirror captain the whole time. That's cool. That's cool. Oh. And so the reason that he is evil and like a, a fucking like pro war dickhead is because he's from the evil fascist world. He's not. He shouldn't be a Star Trek they... captain. All of my complaints, I was right. <laughs> do they? Do they find like the good guy? The... No, he's been dead the whole time. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's, it retroactively makes the whole first season way better Star Trek than it was before that. That's really... How do you feel about that That kind of thing of, like, had twists been, making things better at the end? I think a twist making things better at the end is... Obviously, making things better is good, right? Yeah. If it wasn't for me being just... Like, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a meta thing, right? Because I was so ready to believe that it was just bad Star Trek... Yeah. Because of the bad Star Trek that's been released before and since... Yeah. Um... It would have been like, this is really weird. What are they doing here? Um, the the only problem is that it was too believably just bad Star Trek. Um, but I think that yeah, that twist absolutely saved that. The the other problem is that he was the best character. Like he was he was a lot of fun to watch. Jason Isaacs is a spectacular actor, has a lot of stage presence. Um, and like him being an asshole was very very entertaining. That's but they couldn't keep him around after that. Oh. <laughs> Cam. I think we need a might need to wrap up Star Sorry. Trek talk. Yes. Yeah, right. But, Winslow, did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, just a se season three. I just wanted good. to three give good. one piece of advice to someone who wants to watch Star Trek that hasn't. Uh, straight up watch Deep Space Nine. You don't actually need anything else going in. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I've had, yeah, not I've had a lot of Deep Space Nine recommendations. Now, I think what I'd like to do is address the elephant in the room. Address the giant... I've already made that joke. Yeah. No, you make it again. No, I'm good. I like to address the elephant in the room. Hello, the giant, Baba. The giant pink elephant in the room. And that's Baba's the Barbie movie. Have you all seen any of the stuff for the Barbie movie? I haven't actually watched I've, any of the trailers. I've, I've seen, just seen the trailers. I've just seen like a lot of discussion about it. And that Tumblr post... That Tumblr post, which was a tw screenshot of a Twitter post which was a screenshot that of an Instagram it down. that post narrows it down yeah that i showed cam as we were coming back from the bathroom you told which me was it. that uh apparently bobby was inspired by things such as serial experiments lane the matrix and the truman show lines up that lines up with what i've seen from the i mean the, um, the, the trailer yeah the first trailer was straight up like a shot for shot remake of 2001 a space i Odyssey, heard about it that. was fucking spectacular <laughs> i i i haven't seen any of the trailers i'm gonna be honest like okay, d d assuming that the movie itself doesn't end up being like a, a like purely referential, like masturbatory nightmare, mm -hmm. and I don't think it will. I think this movie's got a lot of potential to be really good. I think it'll draw people in with the masturbatory nightmare and then turn out to be good. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, right? 
Um, Hopefully. Cinematography wise, it looks like it's going to be pretty like something special. Yeah. Did you see the like the the what the Ryan Gosling interview? Yeah, talked about Ken fail energy or whatever. Yeah, Ken's just a guy. He said, He's "Just Ken." Yeah, he like accepted the thing. He went out, do- he went outside. He saw a Ken doll face down in the mud next to a squished, squashed lemon, and was like, "That is the energy I want to bring to this performance." Because his daughter had just left him face down in the dirt. Yeah, right. Ken's not important, and that's what he's bringing to this. <laughs> he's bringing nothing. I'm about that. Right? It's it's an interesting, like, dynamic that he's intentionally going for here. And, yeah, like, the movie's not about him. He, like, he's, he said, like, Ken's not, like, he's not successful. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't, like, own anything. He's a, like, and that's not, that's not the plot. That's just things about him. <laughs> Like, mm. it's not a movie about how Ken's useless. It's a movie with Ken in it, so he's useless. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. Which is, like, that's good. And I think, th- I don't know, I think Ken's getting a lot of, like, hype. I, I got excited. As a version of what they're trying to do, Ken shouldn't be important. Um, <laughs> but the fact that he's not important is is a big deal, and it's sort of looping back in on itself that way, in a way that is, like... Yeah. Just let him not be important. I but feel like I've cool. seen more stuff, like memes and shit about Ken than I have about anything yeah, else in right? the movie. right, and that's, that's the problem. <laughs> um, I kind of got excited when I saw Michael Cera who was in it. Yeah, Michael Cera's uh, Ken's friend. Uh, Ken, Alan, 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 Ken's Alan, friend. There's Ken's only one good Alan. Friend. All of Ken's clothes fit him. Um, yeah. This is a real item you could buy. Yeah, okay. Good friend. All of his clothes fit him. Yeah. yeah. They're just so uh, well, there's like a whole different bunch of actors for Ken, but there's only one Alan. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because well, oh. there's different Kens. Yeah, yeah, that's. I saw like this person was doing Ken and this person was doing Ken. I'm like, so who is it then? Oh, it's different. Yeah, because yeah. they're all Kens. There's, there's all these different Barbies as well. Yeah, okay. No, this makes... This is cool. Dolls, yeah. It makes sense. But there's only one Alan. There's only one Alan. And I'm glad it's Michael Cera. Yes, it, it did have to be Michael Cera. <laughs> Talking about Michael Syrup, this loops into another thing I want to talk about. Yeah. Which is Scott Pilgrim, again. Yep. I'm about this. Lay it on me. Do you, do you know about Scott... Do you have thoughts about Scott Pilgrim, Generally, I'm uh, Sure, I mean... Have like, you read the comics? Yes, I've read the comics. Wait, uh, hold on. Are you trying to gatekeep Scott I, Pilgrim? I was about to gatekeep Scott Pilgrim. If you had said no, I would have been like, well, then you don't have anything to I, say. Yeah, okay. So, yes, I've read the comics. I've enjoyed the movie. I, one of my favorites. It's really um, good. I'm rereading it for like the third time. So, are we talking about time. like what? It being the a anime. Spin- yeah, an anime spin-off with the, the exact cast. I, I don't know if it's a spin-off. I think I, it, well, no, no, the, yeah, no, sorry. The anime with this exact same movie cast which i honestly looked at several times and assumed was an april fool's joke no it, um, it was announced on like april 3rd wasn't it but it still looks like an april fool's joke yeah right it's it's so good no i knew about they were working on an anime for a bit i remember reading an article about mm. it like that it was released like two years ago being like they're working on an anime but this was like the official announcement like the cast and shit that was sick i'm i'm really excited for it because as, as I read the comics first, and I loved the comics, and then I watched the movie, which is probably the opposite order for most people, or most people don't even read the comics. They just mm. they just know Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, indie movie darling, Edgar Wright, mm. whatever. Good film. Great. Um, however, I like many adaptions, I watch that film and I'm like, that's not the comics. It no. is... No, it's not. Did you I th- play the 2D sky- side-scroller game? Yes, I did. It's, that's, that's actually really good. I, I, I didn't like it as much as I thought it would. I, I thought it did a good job of being re- like more true to the comics it than was, the yeah, the definitely, movie was. Definitely. And it definitely had a really nice vibe to it. Vibe, vibe I, to it. But I'm just bad at beat-em-ups. I'm I, not a big I, fan of 2D side-scrollers in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't that big a fan of like the kind of beat-em-up-ish nature of it. Just It just looked like a good game. It, it w- looked great. It's it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, a fun li- it's a fun little time to have with friends. Anyway. I have it installed on the Unis for computer. Um, if you want to play it after. <laughs> <laughs> let's just yeah, let's just stream but uh, like the the movie feels to me not like it feels to me like it's a different story the ending is different yeah so much stuff is not in it so i'm really excited to see um the comics get like a more proper uh-huh. translation apart from here's the same concept we've kept volume one the exact same and then speed run everything else mm-hmm. John, I gotta say, it's very refreshing and terrifying seeing you still be optimistic about things like this, and I'm I'm all here for it, man. I love. I it. mean, what 
There's not been a single thing in Scott Pilgrim that's been bad. No, the comic I mean, was good. I, I, no, I, 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 I feel like good. you're getting an adaptation of a thing that you've liked for a while, and you're just like, yeah, sick, love to see I it. I watched a video every of someone getting something, really hyped for it. Every yeah. time someone announces an adaptation of something that I like, I'm like, oh, Christ, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't do this to me. No, I, this is I not I saw one person getting really excited for it, and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm about, apparently the... The studio that's making it, they've made some really cool animes. Yeah. They've like seen an interesting art style. Do you know which studio off the top of the head? No, they did like Ping Pong the anime. Okay. Um, I, I can search I, it I up. I haven't seen Ping Pong the anime, but I think I've Me heard neither, of it. Me neither, but I've, I've heard of it. Um, but like, it's the same people working on it as the movie. Like, the author's working on it. Yeah, yeah. Like, how... Yeah. And it's not like Scott Pilgrim... The thing about Scott Pilgrim is that Scott Pilgrim isn't is not about new stories. Scott Pilgrim is... The comics told a story, and then the 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 movie tells the same story, the video game tells the same story. It is not like... Yeah. It's not like Star Trek or Star Wars or so many things, which, like, yeah. they make new stories the, that the, set in the same world. Scott Pilgrim is a story, and they just retell it in different formats. Yeah. So there is only so much they can fuck up for the, uh, that. I mean. Okay, oh, the, my there is the child. obvious way they could fuck it up, which is what if they didn't understand that Scott sucks... Okay, but they literally have. Yeah, with this, with this in this case, yeah. you're pretty confident they. Know yeah, that. they they um, understand. Yeah. But that's like that's the that's the thing, right? I honestly I've have seen, you read the them, comics? Uh, I don't think I read all of them. I I've think Scott a sucks a little less in the comics, or at least more time is taken to like make him somewhat likable. At least when I first. Oh no, read no, it. he's he's likable, right? But he does also sucks. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Um. Yeah, relatable. and that's like that's what he the is, story he is. He is like yeah, Scott's such an interesting character in how relatable he is, and also how much he sucks. Like he's like, huh, this guy's just like me. This guy fucking sucks. <laughs> I hate him. Um, maybe uh, I don't uh, hate Scott. Well, I mean, like, because I, I first got Scott Pilgrim content when I was in like you know early high school, right? And yeah. I was like, this guy's cool. Totally fucking missed that he sucks, mm. and that high I school me should thing. never have been put in charge of a Scott Pilgrim movie, and wasn't thankfully. Because that would have been a terrible... Well, you know I what? probably no, would I, have missed the point. If High School Me was put in charge of the it. Scott Pilgrim movie, he would have been paid a lot of money to do it. But I don't, I don't think it would have been worth it. Um, <laughs> certainly not for the guy paying for it. Um, but yeah, like... No, I, I don't know. I think you've convinced me. I'm also I'm also a little bit more optimistic. I'm more optimistic yeah. now than I was before. But yeah. like, I... I go, and that oh, means and also... Okay. I, on format well. helps. Format, format helps. helps. The guys that made the ping pong anime... Making ping pong an anime that's interesting to watch is the exact energy I want to see from Scott Pilgrim fights. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like, the, the over-the-top action shot of a ping pong ball? Perfect for Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like I, sports, sports anime, and the goofier the sport, but the more seriously they're taking it, the better. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Right, in the same way yep. that, like, if you were going to get, like, Magic the Gathering the anime... Well, you're not getting, like, monster fighting shots. You're getting fucking... shots of people putting down cards real hard. Snip. Yeah, that's what I want from Scott Pilgrim, the anime. Uh, Magic the Gathering, the anime, was just that one episode of South Park. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's it? Okay. Science Saru. Anime House. I've never heard of them. No, never. Though I, I do want to say that I, I want to applaud your, op- applaud your optimism like Cam did, because yeah. not only are you talking about a character that you objectively know sucks... We're talking about a reveal in April, which you cannot trust. I, I, I still am skeptical about this, but I'm like, oh, you've, your enthusiasm has, has caught on. I just don't see, apart. F- okay, so you've got like the 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 like traditional oh adapt ad- adaptions tend to suck these days. But I feel like looking at Scott Pilgrim, looking at there's who a, they've yeah. got, there's like nothing that points to where like. It, it all think, points to I don't it think working you could well. have done a bed. I don't. Yeah, uh, here's the thing, right? We, I, okay. The concern for me is. Sorry, no, you go. You go. Yeah, I was going to say is I don't think that you could have done a better movie adaptation for Scott Pilgrim. To be honest, even though the movie is different. No, and, I agree. Right? Like, I, I get, think they got the best best director for it. It flow. It flows well. It's a be- great cast. It's a very good movie. I don't think you could agree. do better. I get. I get upset over like the Scott Pilgrim movie a lot because it's different in the comics. But I. I do have to. Like, what uh, was the manga to, better? I do have to concede. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally that gu- fucking guy. I have to concede that, like, I'm that a, guy when so you're making things, when you make upset. a movie adaptation, you've got to like cut things and change things. Yeah, and uh, um, which is something that me as a kid, when I watched the Maze Runner movie, didn't understand. 
Um, I got very upset watching that movie. Oh man! Which probably John, you're pulling doesn't me away from my, you're pulling me away Maze from Runner my stance sucks. at this point. What, what, sorry, you're pulling me away from my stance. Just by, just by virtue of other other media that you've enjoyed. Well, I was I was like so, I was like fourteen and I read the Maze no, Runner. So I'm sorry. Yeah, no, look, I remember that when the first series of event, Unfortunate Events movie came out, and I fucking oh, despised yeah. it. And to be fair, that one I'm pretty sure was just bad in most ways. There were some things good about it, but like the actual in general, I don't think I liked it very much, and I think that probably would hold up. <sighs> they but, were just um, trying to make it true to the name. My concern with Scott Pilgrim is they've got they've got the original creator involved. They've got the same cast as the movie. Why think why are they doing this again? I was very concerned when Snowpiercer, a show, like, got made into a show because it had just been made into a movie, like, less than five years ago, and I was, like, with the same director. And I was like, why are you doing this? And the answer is that he had a different story to tell, yeah. right? It's from a different angle. It's a different cast, different, like, situation. Yeah. And, like, the, the different time scale of a movie as a TV show let them play with different things. And that was pretty good. But yeah, I I do I do wonder why they're making this, and because you kn- you know that they were like told they couldn't make something new instead. Mm, I uh, do you have something to say, Winslow? I've got a feeling that they want to do more with Negus God. No, my f- that's that, very late game though. Yeah, but like from a from a movie standpoint, yeah. Negus Scott isn't really so much explored as it's just kind of thrown in right at the He's end. To be yeah. fair, Negus Scott is not exactly a core part of the comics but it is definitely explored more uh than in the movies the the movies very much feel like oh this was in the comics we'll throw it in and then the comics you know it actually yeah. has but like I know. that's my thought my thoughts is i i again i watched a i watched like one video by an anime youtuber that go recommended to me about like why you should be hyped for it and it's gotten me hyped but it it covered this topic of <laughs> video working as intended it covered this topic of why do it and that it's because what well why make a movie of it you know yeah. It's to get it in that different format. And it, this would also be putting it in like a video format. Um, except what, except because it, it's an anime rather than a movie, you can cover all that stuff that yeah. in the comics that you, you didn't get to in really the movie. Flesh some things out, so yeah. it's like you've got the comics for if you want to read like the original mm. and whatnot. You've got the movie for that kind of live action. It, with Snowpiercer, it, there was a reason for it and it was quite good. And I'm yeah. like, this, this can be like that. Yeah. So my original, like my, my initial thoughts, the same as with uh, Snowpiercer, where I'm like, I'm worried, but I also, I know that it can be done for a good reason and can yeah. work out. I think in, in conclusion, it's like, you've got the comic on one side, you've got the movie on the other, and this will be like in the middle. Um, I, I think if, mm. if they want to make this something worthwhile, aiming for the middle is not it. I reckon they should aim to go further on the other side flesh things out go ham yeah it shouldn't be a line it should be a triangle no i mean like uh, as yeah no that makes sense put, put the anime on the other side of the original on the other side of the comic well you can't do that because, because you've got a longer format now right in theory you can flesh more out per thing if you've got the original writer on board they can, you can like you can do things like explore nega scott more right you can you can take Maybe. bits that haven't been fully explored in the original comic and you can i'm going to be honest it. if this is a if this is a sh- like panel for panel remake of the comic but an anime uh then i will be ecstatic uh i will be very happy yeah so like which i don't think they'll probably do they'll no pro- I, I think that would be i think that would be more disappointing than you give it credit for yeah yeah maybe uh ex- I, I, I said ecstatic but that's a very exaggerated word. i would be happy with that yeah i, I would like be happy if, um but yeah. yeah as in if they're gonna like if they're gonna make it like that anything they cut would be a disappointment whereas if they're adding to it if they're fleshing more out then they're doing more with it as new stuff they're not removing the things that you've got right they're adding more things okay it's potential. I don't know. That's that's. Me, I think like- they might add some more things or flesh things out. But like the movie is not the movie doesn't really have much that the comic doesn't have. Yeah. Like, and that's, no, that's still that's what good. I'm saying right, like so, the movie's on that one axis of you've taken things out to make it compressed, right? Yeah. Whereas for the anime, I'd see it as you could expand, you could you could decompress it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I just guess I don't know how well like comic how long comic scenes be. translate into like mm. watch time. Because in my head, I was like, well, they can cut less out or well, they can with, keep more in because a season of an anime with is Edgar more Wright, you know that they can really make those scenes snappy. Mm. Um, and I don't, the, you didn't say Edgar Wright was involved, but... Um, no, he, the, the, is, oh, he is. He is? Edgar Wright's involved? I thought you said the original writer of the, sh- the comic oh, was involved. I know that... I thought Edgar Wright was involved as well. But yeah, because Edgar Wright does those like comic transition snappy scenes yeah. quite well. I, I think that's. I think that would be one of the better places to put him for things mm-hmm. like that. I would agree entirely. Um... 
and like the dialogue in the Scott Pilgrim movie was the exact kind of snappy you could really push through a lot of content with it and he did a pretty good job of that originally um, I also think that an anime at that pace would be a lot. <laughs> I don't think that. I, I, yeah, I don't think that it would, could operate at the same pace. Yeah, certainly not for a whole season of content. I think that would be a, an absolute blast to the skull. Mm. But yeah, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Now you're right. Um, well, I'm, I'm constantly prepared for things to not be good. I'm watching. That's how so I... the original tweet I saw was by Edgar Wright saying. This is not a drill, this is happening. After much using, musing over the years about there being potential for an anime adaption of Scott Pilgrim, I'm thrilled to say one is imminent. All right, yeah, but okay. That doesn't necessarily. No, that, that, no that, Edgar Wright. It, Edgar Wright. It doesn't say what Edgar Wright does, it just says Edgar Wright in like the thing. It's like, you know. Yeah, no, from, from, right. executive, no I'm on board. from executive producers, yeah. Edgar Wright. No, if he's, if he's involved, then I think. Brian Lee O'Malley and Ben David Grabinski. He can bring the energy of fast paced dialogue in a way that. So have fits. I convinced you that the Scott Pilgrim anime is something to be hyped about? No, but you've convinced me it's possible that it'll be good. Okay, well, Which that's, is, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty that, good as far as I get, That's 50% man. conversion rate off the podcast, my yeah. guy. Um, um, and, and remember, that for me, it's like, that is my, that's the most I give anything these days. Yeah, true. Um, no, I'll take that. Me, me being, like, deeply pessimistic about the state of media is a defense mechanism. Yeah. On account of the media that's been bad. Are you mm. excited for any media? No. New stuff? No. I'd like to take a take a moment to just sort of leave, go back to something that we mentioned before, which was about how much faith John put into what something that was very very close to an April Fool's yes message because there've been some perla April Fool's stuff yeah and I'd like to talk I'd like to talk about that for a bit if we can go you, what yeah I I have right. one that instantly comes to mind so there's three April Fool jokes that I want to talk about one is from last year which I, I think I know it uh, which is uh, Cam probably does know it it's the Leagues of Votan reveal for yep. Warhammer yep where on April 1st they revealed the Space Dwarfs race for Warhammer 40k mm -hmm. which is a race that used to exist but got like retconned out of existence and was like a joke in the background for like a good decade and a half so they so they put out this announcement on April 1st you yeah know, Space Dwarfs squats. Space yeah. Dwarfs are back you know, that you're on, like, a spaceship, the Slows. door opens, and then the camera... He's like, oi, I'm down here, and the camera pans down to the That's space That's funny. Floor, right? Funny shit. Yeah. Then, like, the next April day they 2nd. went... April 2nd, they were like, oh, no, we weren't joking. That was an April Fool's joke, but we're doing that for real. Yeah. The leagues uh, of Otan so, are real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They've they've released them now. They're, there's yeah. models for them. They're, so, they're back. So was it a joke or not? They were... They, they did the original reveal as a joke. Uh -huh. and, and that people were like Haha, that's funny and then they're like no it's real and people are like what <laughs> yeah because I, rem I, I remember I remember my boy Seawatt yeah. talking about it I'm like it wait no I remember seeing that that was a joke he's like no 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 they made that real it was and one I'm of like, those jokes that was actually real they slash HJ it took me until April 10th to, to believe to it. believe a whole over a week over a week no totally fair it right. seemed fake yeah um so that, it, that that is the that is the kind of bar I'm looking at for for April Fool's content. Okay, that is my favorite April Fool's joke from the last like few years. I think I've got a couple of better ones. Yeah, there, there was some the, the best there was thing a about really that good one. Is it doesn't year. promise me something that's good and then say it's not real. Okay, it promises me something. Right, what have you got in mind? For and then says me it is real. There are two that I want to talk about. One is uh, Jim Land, uh, the Jim's microstate. Don't. That was that was oh. April Fools. That was an April Fools joke. Oh, thank <laughs> fuck! <laughs> oh yeah, I fucking think I remember this. That makes much more sense. What was the deal sense. with Jim's land? What was okay, it? Jim Jim's mowing guy secedes from the state uh, over COVID yeah. restrictions. Yeah, I I I didn't realize that, that was, was an April fake? Fools. I oh, thought that thanks. was just. I thought he was just like an insane. I thought he was. Guy. Yeah, I thought he'd gone off the deep end, man. It was totally believable. Yeah, so that's yeah. the thing, right? And that's why it's such a good April Fools joke, mm. oh. <laughs> right? Like, because I want, I want to preface it for, for people who may not know, Jim of Jim's mowing's a mad lad. Yeah. Right? The dude's just believe, crazy I, enough for that to have, to have been believable. I can't believe so, In addition like, to, like, I, I went down, I went down the Jim's rabbit hole for a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been there. All right. Um, and this, um, you've, you know, you've discussed Cameron that Hall, Jim's Cameron knowing. Hall has gone down the Jim's rabbit hole before. Yeah. AKA, what was it? The, the Jim's, Jim's, Jim's number. Shirt. Yeah. Jim's knowing Jim's dark pact with the forces beyond this earth. Yeah. Right, <laughs> Call so, Cthulhu is a great game. Yeah, um, uh, so Jim, probably. In, a, in addition to like Jim's mowing and like Jim's, Jim's electrical, Jim's asbestos removal. <laughs> there's Jim's, Jim's hazardous repair. material. Yes, there is. There's there's all kinds of. Them. Is there like Jim's nuclear waste? 
that would cover under Jim's hazardous material. Keep up, John. Um, <laughs> but I was reading through Crossed one of the bios, and one material. of the bios was Jim's Poo Patrol, yeah, which I believe has been changed to Jim's Pet Patrol. That makes sense. Um, and there are a couple of other Dude, truly wild, like, patrol. like the number of Jim's franchise stuff. They hyper specialized. It was is a smart thing to bonkers, do. right? So the notion that like Jim, I'm searching this up. Um, yeah, no. Um, oh. Um, yeah, so the idea that, like, Jim of Jim's Mowing could go and form, like, Jim's Hut River Province. Oh my god, dude, I'm, I'm, right. like, a little bit relieved, because I was like, do I have to just not wear the shirt if he's going to become, like, a weird fascist dictator of his own little zone, I or mean, try like, to? he's already a little bit he's not, problematic. He's, he's a, not spectacular, of, but, like, he wasn't, like, like... He is, yeah, right, um, but yeah, um... This, so yeah. Jim's jumping castles and party hire. Yeah, Jim's Fuck ju- yes. Yeah, no, that that's that's one of the ones I remember seeing. But yeah, so like the idea of the the Jim's mi- um you know Jim's micronational government bu- bureaucracy was something that tickled me a little bit, especially given our ca- previous Cameron Hall deep dives into yeah. into the Jim stuff. I'm excited for your third one now. Now exclude this Jim's merch. Yeah, yeah. Why is been- it supporting November? It's April. Oh, because there gonna- isn't Jim's uh, information technology support. Yeah. It's also because you're going to stop selling the shirt? Nah, someone will buy it. Yeah. It's, it's Worst a, case, they wait till November to it's, buy it. It's some clothing with Jim's mowing, but it's M-O, like, Yeah, spectacular. I yeah. mean, we've got the no, Jim's mowing shirt. What, what's the last April Fool's? Because I've got one in mind, and I, it's probably the same it thing. It might be the same one. So my favorite, one, my, my actual favorite April Fool's joke from this year is from Sega. Yeah, oh, okay, okay, no. Yeah, fair enough. No, it, yeah. I forgot about this one. Yeah, um, which is the one to say that we've listened to your feedback. We've taken it all on board. Sonic the Hedgehog is dead. We killed him. <laughs> that killed was Sonic. so funny. So, yeah, they... They dropped re- a little murder mystery game Yeah, they well. dropped a little murder Apparently mystery it's game. it's pretty good. I played it. I played it yesterday. Is it good? Yeah, no, two, I, well, it's, like, it's a short game, but, like... Oh, of course. It, yeah, it's a little two-hours thing. It's... I really enjoy the writing. It's colourful. Nice. It's, Thing. it's not particularly difficult but it's not meant to be yeah so uh um, this this game was called the murder of sonic the hedgehog that's right uh, yeah. and it, yeah the the video was just them showing like clips from like sonic games we listened um and we've decided to take your feedback and out we killed them and it's then shows sonic in the fucking family guy death pose yep. spectacular and just with the words he's dead yeah um <laughs> so that is a good and then they just decided to release a fucking good little game yeah, with it with cute good little point and click game with a little sonic run mini game um no that is spectacular uh, it's, it's wonderful it's wonderfully well so worked. funny it's and so well done did you know the motor of sonic the hedgehog is the highest user rated sonic game on steam <laughs> that does not surprise me to be fair sonic games are pretty dog shit <laughs> i'm playing sonic frontiers at the moment um, Despite how it is, oh god, it I've really mixed things. <sighs> That's the best you hear about a Sonic game. Yeah, I've heard like they can be fine, like at best, and you can enjoy them certainly. Like yeah. they, they they can be a lot of fun, especially if you like you know if you just want a Sonic game, you've got one. Mm. Um, they wouldn't hold up well in a vacuum. But most things don't. Yeah. Um, like that's the thing. They're not like significantly back. worse than games on average. They're just not as big ga- games wise they're not as good as Sonic is a good character alright so I'm like two hours into Sonic Frontiers so I feel like I can give a full review at this yeah, point yeah no definitely um, so you're like in the Sonic mid tiers <laughs> yeah nice good bits um fuck train of thought's gone now sorry bud <laughs> uh like so the Chronoclorians <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it over over the podcast, but I am making a face at John. He was just about to talk, and then I said that, and then he just scrunches his face and looks yeah. away. Uh, Cry some Sonic Frontiers about it. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, um, graphically, it's not great. It's not like it's. Uh, there's just a lot to do. Remind me about graphically after you're done with this bit. That's, there's not a whole much, but yeah, like so. There's it's not a it's, lot to do and yeah. review. No, there's no, there's there's, too much. there's a lot to do, and I think that's actually a little bit of a problem. Does it suffer from that like open world too much things on the to so, do? Okay, so you know how like in Breath of the Wild, I like, played it. Really? Hold on. Sorry, we're going to stop talking about Sonic for a moment. Do I have to fucking buy you I don't Breath have a of the Switch. Wild? That's fair. 
Um, uh, Breath of the Wild is, is good. It's big. What's the last open world game I played? I was playing Witcher 3. Fucking Skyrim. No, I haven't played that either. Witcher 3 works. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't play Skyrim. Give me Steam details. Don't, don't no, I'm, Sky- no, I'm going to get him the I've tried to I've play Skyrim. I've finished playing I've Skyrim. I've literally tried to play Skyrim, but my PC version is fucking, like, the opening cutscene was so glitchy. Like... Oh, yeah, no. Modding out the opening cutscene is the I most I tried to mod. to mod it out. I spent, like, two yeah. hours, like, trying to search out how to mod it out, and then I open it, and it's still there, and I'm like, I can't Can be bothered. Just- buy you NIS for Skyrim and you can play it here on what is sure presumably can, not a wooden PC. I'm sure we can pirate What do you mean? Skyrim. My PC is more powerful than the Unis for PC. Yeah, the problem is Skyrim. The problem is Skyrim, not my computer. I'll have... Yeah, okay, probably. That, um, yeah, that does line up. I, 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 my computer so my computer can run like Cyberpunk and like Ray Traced at like at least 20 FPS, so I think I'm fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Point is, play Breath of the Wild. It is... It's pretty good. It I is will, a reason if, to buy a Switch. Yeah. Um, well, I think I've got a Wii U with it if you want to borrow it at some point. Oh, my God. God I don't use it. Wii, they released Breath of the Wild on the Wii U? Yeah, it, yeah they, the they, load times are a bit worse, but it works perfectly. Yeah, they, they did that a little bit with, um, I think, with Twilight Princess as well. Yeah. They released it on the GameCube and on the... Um, the I, I on don't... The I don't... I won't buy a Switch to buy Breath of the Wild because no, there's totally still fair. so many games I'm yeah, to no, play no, on totally PC. Fair. Okay, sure. But, like... I Breath of the Wild is one of the better open world games I've played and one of the only ones that could hold my attention properly. Yeah. Breath of the Wild is arguably the best game on the console. Yes. And it was like the release. I've heard it very good things about it. Um yeah, I cannot recommend Breath of the Wild enough. Um especially considering the new Breath of the Wild games coming out. True. Tears of the King. So you should what you should do is instead of buying We're a not Switch, sponsored by Nintendo. God, I wish we were sponsored I'm by a Nintendo. little bit sponsored by Nintendo. <laughs> um No, you sponsor Nintendo. <laughs> If Breath of the Wild is a game to buy a Switch for, then buying a Switch for Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild 2, mm-hmm. I think, is an entirely valid decision. Finance is pending. Uh, yeah, <laughs> finance is pending. I don't know if I want to get in the habit of buying consoles for one yeah, game. Yeah, no, totally fine. Because um, that would lead me to buy, what, like a PS5 just for the newest Ratchet and Clank game, which I heard was really, really good. That's yeah. f- I, Ratchet I have and Clank not heard Rift Apart. It, but... I haven't heard too much about it, apart from when it released this games journal that I like... Uh, said it was like a 10 out of 10 game. Um, and I, I want to believe him because I'm a Ratchet and Clank God, the fan. Num- the number of hours of Ratchet and Clank I... 3 that I have <laughs> under my belt in you multiplayer. I didn't own that game. Multiplayer? It... Yeah, no, I'm talking the... purely at, at my at Seawatt's place. There was a Ratchet oh, and Clank 3, yeah. like, like, there was a Ratchet and Clank 3 multiplayer? Yeah, yeah, you, we had, we had the, like, this, the play, PlayStation 2 had the fucking double extender thing so you could play four player. Oh, fuck I yeah. have, like, definitely triple digit hours in that hmm. I probably not have... even like online multiplayer purely local multiplayer was We're it like PvP split screen PvP that's some shit fuck I didn't realize Ratchet and Clank had PvP I played so much Ratchet and Clank 3 and like Gladiator those are my ones mm. uh, I don't know if I played more 3 or Gladiator I want to say Gladiator do you, do you ever play Ratchet Gladiator no I, again I never owned a Playstation uh uh, Ratchet Gladiator was like, right. what if you took the ar- fucking like arena levels of Ratchet and Clank and just turned it into a whole thing? So, so to, yeah. to recap, my review of Sonic Frontiers is it's good by Breath of the Wild by Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cam, you asked me to come back to you for yeah. graphically. So, uh, I, I don't know if you don't make me this. regret this. Have you heard about why they, they figured out what was causing the frame rate and like memory leak issues in uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Wasn't it that it was like. Can I spoil it? Because I think I saw a post about I, this. I think you see. I'll, I'll. So the issue yeah. with the frame rate is that it wasn't doing any uh, like cropping of its rendering. Right? It was rendering everything, mm-hmm. uh, which is that's terrible for video oh, games. Right? right. It, normally, you render just what your character is like, what what the camera can see, and like maybe stuff that you might expect it to be looking at soon. Um, because otherwise, you're rendering a whole bunch of shit that you can't see. She's just wasting your like your computer function. Your processing power. Uh, so not only was it not doing that, it was rendering an entire ocean at all times. That ocean was the size of... Like, it was bigger than, I believe, planet Earth. Um, and had a skybox way bigger. <laughs> I'll see if I can find the post. Yeah. But so it was basically... Wild. It I- was- it's like the, the whole most ocean. basic level graphical rendering things. Things that I would know to do is not to render everything at all times. 
This is especially because coming from like again going back to Breath of the Wild, which had a large space. Yeah. The way Breath of the Wild did, managed its rendering was very very right? smart. It, it would the worst you'd get in Breath of the Wild is if you were to glitch the game out to go stupid fast, you'd get some fucking tearing, yeah. as it would or like some stuttering as it would like load things that you were moving towards. Mm. Yeah, Breath of the Wild was graphically rendering things spectacularly, especially on like the Wii U, which is not a great console graphically. I don't get how the Pokemon company doesn't go, hey, Nintendo, we are trying to do this open... Spe- like, we're trying to make Pokemon Breath of the Wild. I think that, like, they could, but again, like... How can it, you it just doesn't, not, like, it doesn't talk need about it, right? It. I'm sure that they've had discussions, but, like, the amount of effort that Breath of the Wild took... I don't think Pokemon... You'd think Pokemon pulls those numbers, but it would be too experimental, Right. Pokemon has a, a, like, working framework. They wouldn't they wouldn't leave that unless they had something really, like, l- low risk. It's not about if it would be good, it's about the risk that they take. And this is a criticism, not me, like, mm-hmm. justifying what they're doing. It's me saying, of course they're not going to do that, that would take some fucking courage. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, I, and again, like, the, the simple fact of the matter it is, is, like, they could release so- Pokemon Indigo or whatever, and it would sell. So, I yeah. found the post. Um, apparently, Pokemon doesn't have to be good to sell. Apparently, not only is it the ocean, but the skybox is not just a skybox. Sometimes skyboxes are semicircular. They're sky domes. But this in this case, sphere, yeah. they have a sky sphere. Um, and the... So, it's in this sky sphere, uh, the, the bit you actually play on. And apparently, the, um, the proportion of the sky sphere to the, like whatever the continent you play on in Scarlet and Violet is, uh, the proportion is bigger than the proportion of the sun to the earth. Someone was really trying to justify their salary at the Pokemon company to be able to go, look, man, look what I've created. Look at the scale of this thing. Yeah. So, I am justifying the fact that you so pay it's, me. It's, it's saying that, you know, Paldi is based on Spain, and if you put spain like overlaid on it it is it is like you can fit like like six earths into that like ocean yeah if if the actual gameplay area was the size of spain it's rendering six earths worth of ocean (laughs) all the time what the actual factual right and like, also there topical. was there was game breaking issues in that game that like had like the, the you can walk backwards up hills one yeah oh no <laughs> yeah. yeah no i love that shit one shit like that right yeah. right could it like, you like put in multiple inputs in the same direction and it would make yeah, you go faster like um but it is it's that like and like those are embarrassing things to have go wrong right that's basic playtesting i haven't done the budget that pokemon company gives to its fucking team and the time it, it hasn't been enough for fucking years right and this has been a well known problem fucking ages but these are embarrassing problems just in the scale of, like, your game isn't working if it's rendering all that. Do you reckon they just, like, they 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 haven't given them more fucking, like, budget or time, oh, it's time. since, like, it they were making, time. like, DS games? I hope that they're getting paid enough to justify the horrible crunch that they're constantly under. They but aren't. you can't get paid enough for that. Like, yeah. mm. it's a nightmare. Um, and, and they'll keep doing it as well. It's not good. But yeah, this it's... Is- it's sad like to that's hear. that's embarrassing as like that's the level of the guy that programmed that knew right that was yeah. somebody intentionally leaving that in because either they just decided they didn't have time or they decided fuck it I'm leaving yeah. it in probably like, I need, both yeah again probably I need both. to pr- I need to justify my salary oh no 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 like he would have been yeah. doing other shit right it's like but leaving that in because that frame rate issue is noticeable mm. like from basic gameplay and it's that they went that's fine we'll ship it. They didn't go like let's check let's look into that. They and like this is not a huge looking game, right? It's it's a Pokemon game. They're not graphically stunning. Yeah. One day game developers will be like, do we need to ship it at the release date or do we need to ship a workable game? And one day they will consistently choose to ship a workable game. But mm. no, I just no soon. no this absolutely not. not. I'm sorry. No, the the existence of early access means that you can ship a half working game. And start to oh, go you through. Know what, you know what I'm Dark worried tide. about? Well, oh, yeah, Dark Tide. Um, you know what I'm worried about? This is not just video games. What, uh, are we going to get early access movies? Imperium Maledictum dropped. Oh, of course, yeah. So, Imperium Maledictum is the new uh, 40k RPG 
tabletop. Uh, it's like a spiritual successor to Dark Heresy, a mm-hmm. game that I know and love. Um, it dropped as a PDF first, right? They were like, we're not going to release the physical book for a while. Obviously, there's still some errors in this we're going to fix up. But they didn't say, like, this is a beta. They said, well, this is the game, right? And it has released absolutely unfinished. Like, there are basic mechanics that do not work. There are, like, typos. There's references to charts that aren't in the book. There is a horrible balancing issues. It's... Like, the some of the, like, basic things that are meant to be in there just aren't, and they have not fixed them yet as well. Like, the dodge thing, they've... Like, the... We've brought up uh, a problem with the way that dodging attacks works in, like, the Discord that they have, and the developers have acknowledged, oh, yeah, that shouldn't be working like that. Yeah. Um, and, like, they were like, yeah, looks like something slipped through from a previous edition. Um, which I think they had to say, and I don't believe that that is the case. I think I just thought that it was fine. Because they then have released, like, uh, another patch with, like, you know, like, some things fixed, and they haven't fixed dodge. Yeah. Dodge is something that you do... So this is a tabletop RPG? Tabletop yeah. RPG. This is something that you do... Once per turn when you're attacked, you can dodge, right? Once per turn when you're shot at. I think that happens pretty fucking often. Yeah. Um, dodge is... Rules as written, absolutely fucking spectacularly broken. Um, if your dodge is at, like, 50% chance to succeed, right? If your dodge skill's at 50, you and your enemy's at 50% chance to hit you. Yeah. Rules as written, dodging makes you... No harder to hit, but makes it that you're more likely to get hit for more damage. What? Yeah. Do- dodge, and if you are at 50% dodge chance and your enemy's at less than 50% chance to hit you, you're not only making it so that you'll take more damage on average, you're making it so that they're more likely to hit you than if you hadn't dodged. What? Uh, part of this is that math is not necessarily obvious. So it's an opposed check, uh, and you compare degrees of success. So, um, and degrees of success is for every, like, it's, it's a D100, and for every 10 you beat it by or fail it by, you get a degree of success or failure, right? Yeah. So, if they're rolling a 50% chance to hit you, then they're 50% of the time they'll hit, 50% of the time they'll miss. Yeah. By making an opposed test with you, if you dodge, 50% of the time, you're going to turn a hit into a miss, right? For 50% of the time, you're going to turn a miss into a hit. Or, or you're, sorry, or you're going to make it, like, 50% of the time you're going to make it so that they hit you less hard or make it a miss, right? Yeah. The other 50% of the time, you're going to make it so they either hit you harder, or... So if you fail a dodge, it you get... Because it's an opposed test, yeah. if you get, like, four degrees of failure, and they get one degree of failure, you've turned it into them succeeding by three degrees. Oh. So, which, again, again is not how it is meant to work, right? And you they've said, don't they've, have they've stated to dodge. on the record, this is... Yes, it okay. uses a resource to dodge. <laughs> Honestly, the more I th- I've been thinking about this a little bit, huh? and I actually think that this is a good thing. And bear with me on this one. Dodge power stat. Dodge power stat. Uh, they, they're, they're, the way they've said they want it to work fixes that. Okay. Uh, so it's that you they uh, so you declare that you're going to dodge. It's an opposed check, but you can't make it worse. So okay. if you don't beat them as dodge, then uh, they so don't, get, they don't hit you That makes harder, way more sense, yeah. And you can't make a miss into a hit. So they, they have to hit you functionally, right? They have to actually successfully mm. hit, and then the dodge has to not beat them in the opposed check. Okay. Which means that dodge is much less... So it means that having a good dodge stat makes you more likely to win the check. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't It doesn't scale just off your dodge. Yeah. So if they're better at hitting you, the so dodge is harder. For, for clarity. And also you choose dodge before they yeah, hit you now. That's the relevant me. part, yeah. So traditionally for um, Dark Heresy systems, um, the sequence of events would be opponent decides to uh, shoot you, they roll to hit. Bam. If they hit... You, you, can are, you can choose to dodge. And it's purely a D100 based off your dodge stat. So if you've got a dodge of like 70, once per turn, you can 70, 70% of the time just not be hit by an attack, yeah. which is it a, is a big cool. deal. Very powerful. for, And one of the biggest criticisms that I have with Original Dark Heresy is that becomes agility a- agility becomes the most useful stat. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you change. And the worst part is because of the way dodge works, even if you feel to move dodge to a different stat, whatever stat you moved it to would become the most powerful stat. Yeah. No. It, it was it was too good. There were a few things you could do. Uh, a common house rule was to dodge before you get hit. So yeah. you have to choose what to dodge before knowing if it's hit you or not. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, like I want to I want to bring this back to uh, yeah, so, about like early releases and stuff. Yeah, of, like sure. they didn't say that that was an unfinished game. They just yeah. released it. The, that's the thing of like they do that. I think it's pretty common nowadays for that kind of stuff to happen. But I 
my my overly optimistic point is I don't think it'll keep happening forever. Are they getting away with it? Yes. Yes. But they can't keep getting away with it. Like, can't they? They, can. they keep they, getting they away with they it. They do, but the I feel like we things... know and more people like the... will eventually know. That's the thing. It's, it's not and getting, it's gonna, like, it's not getting less popular. It's getting more popular. Like people are getting... Like the sales for early access things are getting bigger, not smaller. I and feel like, like it'll reach a hill at some point. And I feel hope. like you would hope. games do suffer because of this. And they yes. don't... Like, how many anthems are going to happen before, like, like the company stop deciding to do that? So the other and how many, like, it, successes with, like, actually polish, more polished games? Um, the, the thing is that it's more polished games are the most, most likely ones to do it. Because you're right. Anthems, people are getting less into the new idea, right? It's like, okay, they're going to release Anthem. You're not going to want to get into early access for it. Yeah. And so they're not going to go. They're not going to say, "Oh, okay, this game hasn't sold well in early access, so we've got to make it good." They're going to say, "Ah, this game didn't sell well in early access. This game was a mistake." Mm. Uh, and what you'll get is a focus in on the games that are already successful that people will buy anyway. Yeah, I think. I think another thing I think about is Titanfall Two, which is now beloved darling. But I was following it since the start, and they had an open beta for Titanfall Two, or actually, I think it was a closed t- beta. I don't know, they had a beta for Titanfall 2, mm-hmm. where they showed off early access, and it wasn't very good. There was a lot of mis- problems in it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. People didn't like some of the like various aspects of it. And so it was like, well, this isn't that good. You know, the map design is not as good. There's all these problems. And that like really hurt the game. It yeah. was like, because people, like the first impression of it, people didn't like. And you know, they used the beta to fix all the problems for the main release. But because it was the beta, you know, it was the first impression, and it was a bad first impression. Yeah, that is And I'm risk. like, and it, then it hurt the release of the game, along with its, like, you know, terrible release sure, schedule, which like, I don't believe that the Titanfall beta required you to play, pay, you know, 30 bucks, or... I actually don't get, re- remember. Get the, the, a a beta the they problem. wouldn't charge you for. Like, that's... So, yeah, so that's the thing, right? I think it was a closed beta. For, I think I yeah, remember a getting beta, a key for it. People getting upset about a closed beta is, like... Is the beta doing its job? Yeah, is the beta doing its job? And if it gives people a bad idea of what the game is going to be, that's the marketing being bad, and it's also a lack of faith that they're going to fix things. Yeah, but like that is how access uh, is not that. Like with the Dark Tide beta, it was like, okay, here's things that they're saying they're going to fix, and some of them were fixing live during the beta, and that was like people were very hopeful for that. And Dark Tide was bigger in its beta than its release, really, because once the release happened, it turns out that the things that the beta we thought just weren't there because it was the beta weren't coming for some time. Dark Tide um, released without crafting, without, like... Oh, oh God, there was, so, there was, like, half a game missing for me. Yeah, it, it didn't have anything to keep you playing it, really. Yeah. Especially because the... Like, the only rewards you really functionally got for, like, getting good at the game were cosmetics. Yeah. Which were not as good as the cosmetics that you could buy for, like, if you bought the game... Mm. If you, if you pre-bought the game, which a lot of people did because they wanted to get involved with the beta and things, uh, then you had enough starting, like, premium currency to just buy something that looks better than what you could unlock. I, I guess my overall point is that, uh, like, I think it's sucky it happens. I think it's sucky it happens. Yeah. But, like, people are, uh, people are smart. They become aware of things, and they change their behavior according to them. And I'm just wondering... A like, individual people are yeah, smart. Yeah, a person is smart. Yeah. Uh, this is the Men in Black quote from, you know, a person is smart, but people are dumb, panicky animals, and you know it, right? I, st- I still feel like, I like even right, if it man. takes a while, I feel like people, like, people overall will become, like, more more knowledgeable of the trend, like, the trends and whatnot. The same, it, 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 you're, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I get you, like, it does and start at a person, like, it does start at an individual level, but, like... I don't know. The, I feel like the scale of time that we're working on is one where um, in the time it takes for people to develop the the change in their philosophy is enough time for it, for this to be cemented as a norm. It, yeah, it, it's a systematic issue is the problem, right? right? Mm. It doesn't... Like, if people stopped pre-ordering games today, it would kill games that already... Like, sorry, if people stopped pre-ordering, like, most games today, right? If they only did it for games that they really trusted to be good already... It wouldn't stop this from happening. As I said, it would just coalesce which games do it. And it would kill other games. It's it's the... Mm. Like, the people making games... And like not the individuals creating it, but like the companies making games are heavily incentivized to do this, right? No. 
and they can promise rewards for people that do it. They can, you know, they can kickstart. Like, they can they... kick that, but it's it's you know they can kickstart. They can go, okay, you know, if you pre-order it, you get this special thing no one else can get. It doesn't take too much before you've got like a reason to do it, and it's not that they'll take not like it, it not working is not a loss to them in terms of ah this doesn't work. It's this game wasn't working. I, that's fair. I, I don't think change important. will happen fast. No, yeah. I, certainly, if change happens, it won't be fast. And I do hope that you're right. I, on I, this. I feel like this is this is John op, John's optimism coming mm, back, and then Cam, yeah, and then Cam continuing to be a cynical bastard. Well, it's the same with movies, right? Yeah. Except instead of like you know the audience paying for it in advance, it's you you can't greenlight a like a new concept movie as easily because people don't know that it'll make money yet, right? So it goes like, all right, bring us back something that we know will work. Because you've got to uh, pay for a movie before you make that money. Hmm. Right? Um, yeah, like, pre-ordering games financially makes so much sense. Because it's like, you know, you're, you're making something very expensive to make. You've got a lot of people involved. You are betting a shitload on that thing being successful. And pre-orders is one of the ways to make that not so hmm. horrifying. I think, mm. and it like it makes sense to do that, even if you're not malicious about it, right? Even if you're just like, we would just like the safety of it, because otherwise, to make a game that's any size, you need so much fucking financial backing on trust, right? It just doesn't make sense to do it. Hmm. Sorry, I've been I've been kind of stuck in my head while you're saying that, thinking about no, the okay. movies, and like, is what I'm saying also applying to movies? And I think, yeah, I think. I think the same way I think uh, games will change to stop being bad, movies will change. Like, there'll still be bad movies and bad games and, like, bad shitty practices, mm. but what those are will probably change. Like, I I feel like the consensus right now is that Marvel is kind of dying out. Like, is that... Do you all feel that? Like, I... I think there's certainly been some fucking flops recently. Yeah, and, um. like... I, I've seen some discussion on one that, like, you know, Endgame was the peak, and ever since, it's kind of people are losing interest you know like i haven't i never really got into marvel to be honest mm. i like between th- i i think like i was most into it in, like fucking early high school like late primary school yeah. and i'd like watch captain america civil war and like the cap y- yeah I know like you. winter soldier but i never really watched like and i haven't i still haven't watched infinity war or endgame and uh after that i've watched barely any um Maybe your perception that it's that's dying thing, is because you, it's already dead to you. Yeah, it's already dead to me, but I feel like... But the thing is, that's that's why I'm... If you took away the funding of pre-release like games, yeah. right, pre-ordering games, then games companies would have to do the same thing movies do, where they've got, you know, they have to go to the producers and say, here's what we want to make, give us enough money to make it, mm. and they're going to say, I don't think that's going to make money, bud, and they won't do it. Because games, just like movies, are prohibitively expensive now, and I think that the Strange only we don't see Kickstarter movies as much. It's the the uh, <laughs> the time to pass for it because like the last Kickstarter Kickstarter movie I can kind of think of as things like um, the Sc- Iron Sky or yeah, the scale's a little different, but they did happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Iron Sky, man. Yeah, um, it, it's that. Yeah, like the only way this gets solved is if people get a lot more okay with things being a lot lower quality and products and i don't mean like they're worse i mean they look worse right like i don't well, i mean like if we go use iron sky as an have to example be cheaper. yeah if we use iron sky as the example yeah right it was i believe it was kickstarter yeah something like that yeah it was um crowdfunded in some form and then it just kind of got released like i want to say six months too late for all of its references, because this is like Bush era shoe throwing jokes and yeah. uh, analogs and things like that, and like it was a fun watch, but I can't remember any individual part of Iron Sky. No, it does yeah. not have good reviews. Yeah. It shouldn't. Um, Read the tagline for us, John. Oh, don't. What's the What's the tagline? <sighs> I thought memory is. Iron Sky, we come in peace? No. no. Uh, let's not. Yeah, I, let's I don't not. Alright, cool. Fire enough. We're... Um, I, Iron Sky is uh, pretty oh. heavy content, yeah. honestly. Uh, it yeah. Was, the, yeah. It okay. was less heavy at the time yeah, it was... because it became more topical than it intended to. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I retract my statement. Yeah, it's fine. Um, let's. But yeah, like. 
making a movie is a very expensive thing to do and like with the level of quality that people are now used to from AAA games and AAA movies you you can't get that and like sure the quality of AAA movies and games is like questionable at best due to the crunch involved mm-hmm. and because they bite off more than they can chew with it and with movies it's you know they use a lot of CGI and they're not hiring like new people to do things so it's the same sort of formula but the the so like that doesn't end with producers and executives going okay that's not working let's green light risky things um or at least not until things get dire enough that they're going to collapse and then most of those will be failures anyway risky mm-hmm. things are risky on like yeah. that 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 risk isn't going to go away just because it is being taken it's a lot of movies have to be bad and still successful for it to be a financially good idea to try making a movie yeah yeah okay um yeah like if you're and, and with video games the like the idea of pre-ordering means that you can more easily green light the creation of a risky thing it's weird that people still pre-order games in a world of digital games i mean some of some of it is like your ability to show support for for mm. content yeah right i mean like are you as pre-order rewards are also a real thing yeah pre-order yes. rewards like and they have to be. when i get get the opportunity i'll probably pre-order hades too and that's ninety percent of my way to say I want to throw more money at. I don't yeah, know if I pre-ordering is you straight up saying I'm throwing money at this company. I like what they're doing right yeah. now. I guess I like, just this is haven't the pre-ordered. With you I'm yeah. so out of that. I haven't pre-ordered anything. The th- last things I can remember pre-ordering, I might have pre-ordered Cyberpunk 2077 because I was really excited for yeah. that. Um, Boo. I really enjoyed playing it uh, at release. Um, Madman, you're insane. Uh, I, Good for you, bud. I love, I'm glad you I, had fun. So, I, up. I just like played yeah. flew all of it. Not that many bugs or glitches, yeah. really. And I thought the quests were really, really well nothing, designed. Nothing game breaking, but like I fun. did have doors phase out of walls. And oh, yeah. I had to restart phase. a few quests because of the thing. And yeah. the funniest, the worst one, which was also the funniest, was when I was driving and I got in my car and just went into the sky. Just <laughs> classic. Up. Yeah, okay. Um, and the, the, the game I can remember pre-ordering before that was Overwatch, I think, because I did want the Overwatch pre-order rewards. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I've I think it's interesting. Yeah, I think we should bring back kickstarting films. Like, I've got this idea for a film that I think we could like crowdfund. It's called I, All or Nothing, J- John, right? But you're okay. so it's about bit, these two roommates. Uh, um, so and once... I thought you were like unironically going to try and say we should kickstart films again, and I was like, no, no, we, and what... just it doesn't. <laughs> I really think we should crowdfund all or nothing. It's about. I think we should crowdfund some jokes. And it's a ace roommate. <laughs> I guess we did crowdfund this joke. Really outgoing. Um, and a roommate who's really not outgoing, introverted. This is a, a classic Tumblr bit. Yeah. Uh, we could, uh, a I'm number not of people on Tumblr got there. scammed by this one. Because yeah. there was a Kickstarter to make this TV series, and it uh, didn't, gross. didn't really go anywhere. Um, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, Six thousand dollars down the drain. Apparently. I have a question. Actually, sorry, I have a question for you guys. Would you have pre-ordered the Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog if it got an like if that was an option? I'm not a Sonic fan, so no. I haven't even played it, and it's free. <laughs> yeah, the only times I've ever pre-ordered anything was where I'm like, I know that financially, I'm not going to be in a state to buy this next year necessarily. Okay, yeah, where it's yeah. Like, I've got the cash to get it now. I'm going to put this out of my mind. I right, think, and I'm- I regret it to this day. I have not played this Destiny expansion enough, and also I could have afforded it anyway. Yeah, rest in peace, my me buying like the season pass of Destiny yeah, right. for up this expansion, and I just didn't. Play I've, it I've realized what it is with Destiny for me. This se- no, this season's fine, right? Oh, the problem with really me like it, yeah. is that it turns out that what I did like about Destiny was spending ten hours a day playing it. The way that I enjoy video games is not healthy, and if I'm trying to experience a video game in a healthy way i don't have as much fun <laughs> yeah no we've we've talked about this yeah it's like i i if i'm playing a video game i want to be absorbed by it totally i think i think i might understand what you mean like yeah i think it's i might about get running it. out of content it's and... not for me, just that it's also like the time i don't have the time to do that with video games right now yeah for me when i imagine playing video games the times i've had the most fun playing video games it is like I am on holiday. I'm spending eight hours in my room yeah. playing this game, mm. um, and like you know, and I can't enjoy video games as much. I'm just a like with every my friends now in high and then. school, and we've played fucking Star Wars Battlefront two for ten hours. Exactly. Yeah, I did that. We did the release launch since, for yeah. Halo two. Yeah, and like, we just played all of Halo two. Right, all um, of it. And, and like that's sort of how I learned to enjoy things, especially because it's like uh, I was yeah. a kid, yeah, right? Same. It's a weekend. I don't have anything else to do. I can just play video games for six hours. Yeah. And, like, I can get... Like, my parents can be grumpy at me, but that's about it. When I, was I don't a, have anything else to do. 
It's 40 degrees outside. Literally. Um, I mean, if it was 40 degrees, you'd come and kill me. Well, yeah, but I didn't know you back then. Yeah, sure. Um, also, you dodged a bullet this year, my yeah, man. Yeah, it didn't hit 40. He didn't kill touch me. Touch wood, no 40 degree days. He, so it could still happen. It could, it could still happen. happen. That's why I say touch wood, right? Yeah. But, but you like, know, John, John saved by a li- like an literal act of God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, um, and that didn't stop it from being aircon on all summer either. But. Well, that's mostly just because I could afford it this time. And like, mm. because Merlin I've and I have been wiring working. Cam money so it's cooler and no, he gets like, less upset at me. Because Merlin and I are both working now, we could, it was like, we one, we need to be able to sleep. Mm. Right? If you if you have work in the morning, it can't be too hot to sleep. That's just not fucking. Yeah, we couldn't do it. Definitely. Uh, and, and like, two, we're both working, so it's like we we can afford it. We're not we're not we're not pushing the aircon down too cold. We're being sane and reasonable about it as a household. But it is like, no, we can we can do that. Good yeah. God. Um, yeah. No, like, I am, that's I am very lucky. Also blessed that it is that we didn't really get big forty degree days. Yeah. I do enjoy joining a Destiny two raid every now and then. Yeah, I I. I just, I, I enjoy playing, doing this content with friends, even yeah. though I honestly, I've, I don't have the motivation to play it out of that right no, now, yeah, or the I, time, I, I guess. I'm in the same spot, yeah. Um, I, I want to run raids. I've been running raids way more often. Mm. Raids the are new, the, the new raid part. is cheeky. Yeah. The thing about raids is that you guys usually run them most oftenly on Friday nights, which is the w- night, the one night every week I, I consistently I, uh, work. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't run a full raid since... I don't remember the last time I ran a full raid. I feel like I feel like I've raided with you at least once. That would have been that. Yeah. We need to, would it be the in person raid? No, I don't think Cam was there for that. No, you couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah, you could not make it. I've 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 raided a few times like last season, but like not not much. Yeah, I'll run you guys through the new raid. I've run through most. I don't, of it. I haven't and, like, bought the new raid's Lightfall. Buy Lightfall. No, no spend I money. Honestly, no, I'll buy know, capitalism. Light, I'll buy Lightfall when I play. Start playing Destiny two yeah, again. No, totally fair. But like, I'm not spending money on a game I'm not playing right yeah. now. No, at this point, um, I don't think I'm, I would I'm buy here for you right now yeah. as a video game partner to be able to help you play Destiny two. If you need a friend, I will when I feel you can like borrow playing my Destiny two. Buddy. It does. I don't. Think I'm not it using it. When I feel like, like playing that. Destiny two, I can will. If we're willing to bend the rules. Currently, if I have time to play video games, I will probably play Star Wars Jedi. The, if it's illegal new, to let your friend borrow your the thing. first one, oh, Fallen Order, Fallen, and then the newest one is Survivor, which is yeah. weird because I feel like you start as a survivor and then you like fall of the order. I guess the fall of the order happens, then you're a survivor. But like, it feels like he was probably a survivor in the first one, wasn't you, he? Yeah, I didn't realize how how true the difference peak is your that now Star the order Wars is standing was. up. I didn't realize how true peak your Star Wars mode oh, yeah, was. Oh, yeah, you Star Wars brain. <laughs> I'm, I've been reading through, like, the High Republic as well. I've been reading Star Wars books and the comics Have and shit. Have you been shit. reading, like, He's Star Zahn. Wars Pitch. No, no, I've been reading the newest, the newest like, stuff that's been coming out the past, like, three years. Okay. Um, Which is, it's the High Republic, so it's all, like, that mm. bit between the fall of the Sith and the fall of the Republic. I... So it's when, it's when the Republic were, like, peak. Like, they were expanding, things are great, Jedi everywhere, Sith are unheard very of. Very Star Trek Federation. Yes, it's very that. It's very much like the 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 enemies are uh, accidents, like, you know, mm-hmm. hyperspace disasters. These pirates who have special hyperdrives and uh, plants. Monster of the week situation And plants. Yeah. Wi- and this plant species, which has awoken again and are very hard to kill because they're plants. I, to do something dangerous, I have a Unisfa Star Wars book recommendation for you. Is it Heir to the Empire? No. <laughs> it is Star Wars Scoundrels, which is in the Compactus. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I've uh, seen... What's it about? So, Star Wars Scoundrels is... It's a Star Wars heist movie. It's, uh... Oh, yeah, I watched Solo. Getting yeah. the gang back together. Yeah, we're, go- uh, we're, we're gonna go steal from... Oh, uh, was I, it? I Black Void? Right myself. Um, yeah, we're gonna do... We're gonna do a... Gonna do a crime and a heist. And it's... Good. Black Sun, I think. Is it canon? Yeah, Black Sun. yeah. I doubt it. It's a book. What's canon these days, man? I The High Republic's canon. Yeah. But that's probably because it's got nothing in its remote space with which to conflict with. Yeah. Also, I mean, all the stuff that's come out since, like, yeah. the whole thing is canon. This is, this is basic. yeah, it's basically solo a Star Wars story, but I think, it's I think post- it is, it is um, post- It is post-sequel uh, trilogy, or like, during sequel trilogy. Yeah. yeah. So I, in terms of its creation, so I think it'd be still canon? I tend to, yeah, maybe. I tend to err away from things that aren't canon, uh, because they make me a little bit sad. Yeah. Um, it's that's like- understandable. It's, yeah. I don't know, man. Thrawn is worth reading. I will probably read Thawne at some read, point. Like, I, Thrawn's been, like- 
they're kind of integrating him back in they, they've brought Thrawn back like Thrawn is yeah the fact that Thrawn is cool enough to be brought back into canon is the most valuable thing mm. um that says I, a lot I will I would like to read Star Wars Legacy which is a comic series of like like Luke's it's it's not canon and it probably what it's like Luke's great 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 grandson you know yeah. and like it's it he's super slimy and like all the characters kind of suck um apparently but it's apparently it's quite good or something um which is it, it's so not canon that i'm like even before like the sequels and stuff i probably would have read it as like some kind of alt mm. thing um, I would probably like to read Rogue Squadron too, because that's still canon in my head. Oh, Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron. Oh, I, we I, love Rogue. We I, love Rogue Squadron in concept. I love playing uh, the X Wing Miniatures game, which had like Rogue that Squadron. Was, it people. was really good. Corrin yeah. Horn was like one of my favorite pilots. Oh in that game. man, I haven't heard that name in years, and it brings a smile to my face to this day. Can confirm. Okay, we we are reaching the end, uh, so and we're I about to like... go back to the beginning of our original content, just being a perpetual loop. Oh uh, well, that's just my head. It just goes back to Star Wars. These we go to Star Wars, into Star Trek, into yeah. the other things we talked about. You all want to play some fantasy? Fantasy football, fantasy yeah, football. All right, we, we've got we've got we've been this podcast been going for one hour and fifty five minutes. Can we need to wrap up? I'm okay, sorry. okay. Wrap no wrapping up. Uh, if you wanted to get into like the fucking Warhammer miniatures, fucking fantasy football is one of the most efficient ways to do it. And do you mean and are you gonna say the name of Blood it? Bowl? Yeah, Blood it's, Bowl. It's, yeah. It's, it's what if fantasy football was American football and in a fantasy world? <laughs> sorry, I, I'm. I F- football. football it, with the I've band. been football brain for the last um, couple days. Yeah, Blood Bowl. That's uh, or fuck, sorry, vampires making punch at a party. Call it a Blood Bowl. Nice. Uh, I thought of that joke on the way here. Yeah. Um, and you've been sitting on it for like the last two hours with the shit, John. Yeah, I have. I've been waiting Good for, for you, dude. So you could like delayed, delayed reward. I was. I couldn't the, do the it. The original joke was gonna be like, me. you know, mix some cranberry juice and like cherry juice and apple juice. Call that a you know, into the punch, call out a blood ball. Yeah, no, you nailed it the first time, man. Yeah, no, yeah, no. But... honestly, I think you should go again one more time just for good measure. Let's get a blood ball joke. Um, uh, uh, me when I'm bleeding and I use a bowl to to catch the God, blood so it doesn't hit done. the sheets, call that a blood ball. <laughs> me when I beat your head in with a fucking uh, like ten pin bowling set. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, any any final thoughts? Cam? Uh, I've never had initial thoughts, and I'm not going to start now, but, but it's football. Football is my thoughts. Football. Football. Yeah, fair. Winslade? Uh, John should invest more in capitalism. I should. That's how you win at capitalism, is yeah. to invest more in it Yeah, first. you should, like... If you don't already have more money in it than the other guy, what are you even doing here? Uh, listeners should pay John for the privilege of this podcast. We should we'll make a Why Patreon. John? We'll make a Patreon. <laughs> That's my cut. Huh? <laughs> you get, you'll get your cut. No. You get your cut. Uh, if and I get paid for this, it's work. You'll get your cut, and it'll be go into a bowl. Call if that I a start blood bowl. You said cut, and I'm like, I'm gonna let John finish. He's got this one. I believe he no, can nail it. Work. Um, John, what's yeah, your final thought? My final thought is: you thought we were fucking dead, you dummies. Uh, you were wrong. Anyway, see you in three months. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice day, friends.